It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots, and uh, we got some church announcements? A yes. A Andrew? Yes, we do have church announcements. Talk to me. Um, fourth show for the special, April 12th, Easter Sunday, L.A., still some tickets left. Going very fast. If you left on the balcony, go get them. TheAndrewShows.com. Tempe this weekend sold out. Thank you. After that, I'm in Hawaii. Two shows. Blue Note. Honolulu. Some tickets left. Go get them, Hawaii. There's a radio personality out there that is a huge fan of yours. In Hawaii? Yeah, huge fan of well, yours. Well, you should be. And <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank and, uh, you. What's his name? You know? uh, her name. Her name. Her name. Yeah. What's her name? I don't know. I forgot. But oh, she, uh, salute she to you. Damn, to I really wish I knew her name. name. I could shout her out. She asked me to she asked me to say hello and, and uh shout you out. If I Google Hawaii radio personalities, you think you might come up? Yeah. I think it's Moana. Well, let me see. <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Hawaii. You know the you know the name of the station? Um I don't know. One oh one one oh one one one. So How'd you meet her? <laughs> How do you <laughs> She DM me? Look at the DM, Andrew. I get a lot of DMs. Who okay? does your this girlfriend is, know listen, about this? She Damn, does, man. I wish I knew her name. She's quite infuriated by it. <laughs> okay? I, sometimes she's like, why are you looking at the DMs that don't even show up? Well, listen, uh, Hawaiian you know radio. The, the secret DMs, the ones that like Instagram try to keep away from you? Yeah. I'd be a nose. <clears throat> listen, the Hawaiian radio personality, whoever you are, I appreciate you. And uh, hit Andrew or hit me so I can shout you out on the next podcast. Yo, okay? we're going to get that. Uh, TheAndrewShows.com. More cities. Uh, uh, we're coming back. We got, I mean, just just a bunch. I know we're in Jersey, Pittsburgh, Orlando, Miami, um, Virginia, Charlotte. Uh, more shows at theandrewshows.com. Get those tickets. And, and again, get them early because what always happens is we come to the market and then you guys are buying these tickets. It's insane, the resale. Yes. People are buying $700 resale tickets in Atlanta. So your friend owes me $1,400. Okay. <laughs> We put them, we put them down. We gave, we gave. Um, so just get them early. Yeah. Just this, I'm telling you right now, I'm warning you right now. They're Hezzy is hot out, out so here, son. Early. Things are good. Hezzy hot out here. Things are good. Now fuck all that things are good shit. You hot out here. I'm the greatest. That's right. <laughs> I'm the greatest What's of all time. That? I just realized it. I'm like the that? greatest of all time. Come on, time. man. Mama okay? mentality, goddamn it. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Holy shit. Now listen, I I'm not playing around. I don't want, I don't, I, I, it's two things. Fix I, up, look sharp. That's right. <laughs> it's, two, it's, two, it's, it's, it's two things I definitely want to address. We're definitely going to talk about uh, Kobe Jelly Bean Bryant. Yes. But I want to talk about, and it, yo, this, this shit seems so old now. And this is how I knows, this is how I know nobody really gives a fuck about anything. Go. Like, nobody really gives a fuck about anything. Yeah. Like, this shit comes and goes so quickly. What is it? Right? Last week it was, Hysteria over Joe Rogan saying he would vote for Bernie Sanders. I, I was in uh, where was I at? I was in Charleston, South Carolina. Yep. On Friday morning, I believe, yep. and it was the number two trending topic. It was like sixty thousand tweets. You know when something like that happens? When you wake up in the morning, and you see somebody trending. You're like, what the fuck happened to Joe Rogan? I click on it. And I'm like, people are upset because Bernie reposted Joe saying, saying that he would vote for he him would vote in for the Bernie. primary. <laughs> like, in the primary my first thought I was like okay I have to first of all I already knew it was some political of bullshit course. but so break I, it down how it works because people don't know how the political system works it's political works. bullshit it is it could be and listen by the way it could be Elizabeth Warren's team it could be Mayor Pete's team it could be Joe Biden's team we don't know who's it's team Biden it or could Warren. be it's Warren or Biden it, Either, it could be either of these people, right? right? And they're all stirring up shit. They start digging up old shit that Joe Rogan has said. Oh, Joe Rogan said something transphobic. Oh, Joe Rogan said Do you know what they said, said that, you know what they said that he said exactly was transphobic? Was. Can we get into that? Yes. Okay. He said there was Farrell a- Fox. Fallon, Fallon Fox. Fallon was Fox was a UFC or a MMA fighter who was a man who transitioned into a woman and didn't tell anyone- and is going into the ring breaking women's skulls because yeah. men are stronger than women. Sorry I, I, to break it to you, I ladies. I did hear she lost one fight, though. Huh? I did hear she lost well, one fight. Who's that bitch? I don't, I don't call women bitches. Well, I call <laughs> that one. I don't know. Because that by the way, girl could fucking by the way, throw I could down. Be, I could be just making that up. Huh? But I do know she was fucking women up. That I know. Fucking women up. Yes. Like literally fracturing their skulls. Yes. Okay? And he's like, I don't think that's fair. You know why? Duh. Because it's not 
Fair. I'm sure we've had that conversation here on Brilliant Idiots. May not have made the, made it, oh. may have stayed on the cutting room floor. I'm what sure. Did you think it made, <laughs> it made it to the full episode? Well, I'm not sure. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I, don't, I don't leave it up to me and you anymore. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I don't know if it did or not. But I remember yeah. us having that conversation, and I'm like, look, everybody can identify whatever you want to identify yeah. as. But come on, guys. Yeah. Come on, man. Let's pump the brakes a little bit. Let's pump the brakes. Men, uh, 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 men that are brakes. transitioning into women or that have transitioned into women should not be doing physical fighting activities with with no with with, uh, with naturally born women. We find whatever you want to call them. it wrong for people that have the advantages men have to beat up women. I will say that and feel confident. Yes. I don't want women to get beat up by people born as men. I just don't think a trans woman should be fighting a cisgendered woman. Yes. Simple as that. Simple as that. And when you see women getting, cisgendered women getting their skulls cracked. Yes. Then you, that tells you there's an unfair advantage somewhere. Yes. So that's what Joe Rogan was being called transphobic for. Now, I don't know if he was using the right verbiage and right language because I can't even keep up anymore. You know I what I mean? I spoke to him. He was. I, I, the clip I saw, I saw him talking about that one specific human. Uh, Fallon, Fa Fallon Fox. Name? Fallon Fox. Fallon Fox. Yeah. And he said, th he was upset about her. And yes. he was like, she is a man. And she's beating women up and yada, yada, yada. Yes. Okay. I don't. I think that's worth a discussion. Yes. I don't think that's enough to label somebody transphobic. Yes. Now, the Planet of the Ape shit, Joe, you on your own with that one. All right? Right. <laughs> well, here's the thing with the, with the ape thing. Mm -hmm. He calls himself an ape all the time. Yeah, but he's not black. No, no, but what I'm saying is if you refer to people as that who are just huge and strong. No, that's not what he was doing. And you know why? I, I'm right. going to tell, tell you why I'll shoot Joe Rogan a, a bail on that, even though I'm not, I can't defend that. He said in the moment in real time, no, that's wrong. I'm, that's racist. He said oh, it. Oh, he in, corrected in real time. In real time. So on then that what clip, are we talking about? On that clip from years ago, he goes, look, they dropped me off in this black neighborhood. He said, I didn't know it was a black neighborhood. I thought I was going to see Planet of the Apes. I, I, I ended up going to watch it with the Planet of the Apes or some shit like that. I forgot exactly right, what that right, was. Right, but right, in right. real time, right. real time, he corrected himself. Right. He was like, yo, I'm not going to say that. That's racist. He's going for a joke. He realizes it's not it, as it. funny as it needs to be for how fucked up it that's is. It. And then he corrects it. That's it. Yes. Okay, now, boom. Those are the two things I saw people going at him at and right. him using the N-word. And we're talking 10 years ago at that, right? We're yeah, talking a long about, time ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's talking about Planet of the Apes. That shit had to be like a decade ago. Yes. You know, he's been doing the broken podcast for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. But even with the, uh, you know, his use of the N-word. Look, I've been said it. I don't think white people should use the N-word. But we yes. have to acknowledge that there was a period where there was a lot of white comics using the N-word. Right. Whether it was Louis C.K., whether it was Neil Brennan, whether it was Joe Rogan. Like, it was a thing. Like, you can go... I, I don't know why it was a thing. And it wasn't like they were saying, my N-word, my N-word. No, you know, they it was, were it talking was, about the word. They were, yes, it's, a, it's jokes revolving around the word. Right. I don't know why Joe Rogan was saying it, because all I saw was the compilation where they were just like, nigga, 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 nigga. And that shit sounded like YG song. So I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why he was saying it. But I do know this. This is what I do know. I've listened to enough Joe Rogan to know that Joe Rogan don't sway either way. I've seen right. Joe Rogan you know, get upset because people call him alt-right and he don't know where that shit is coming from. He you know? is a liberal guy. He I don't even know if he's Democrat. liberal. I do. I know. I do because I speak to him and this is what he tells me. Well, he, I, know, I know for a fact he's never voted conservative, ever. Right. But in 2016, he endorsed Gary Johnson, who yes. was a fucking libertarian. So I yes. don't know where Joe Rogan falls on the political spectrum. I, don't I know, can tell you I where. don't know where he He leaves. tells you where. Every when, single episode. When I hear him, I just hear a guy who's curious about life. He it's has my, it's me. everybody on. Everybody. He yes. has he has everybody. He has conservatives. He has liberals. He pro has Israel, pro Israel, pro anti Israel. CNN yeah. would never have that on, by the way. So it, it he has every part of the spectrum on that show. Yeah. It is the most intellectually, racially, uh, politically diverse show on the planet, hands down. Yeah. This has nothing to do with who he is. What this has to do is elites have politicians and they have. PR engines, and by PR engine, I mean CNN or one of these te television shows. Now, we've said it for years about the conservatives with Fox News. Mm -hmm. They don't even masquerade like they're not. Fox News no. is like, yeah, we're the right-wing channel. Yes. CNN lies and acts like they're just... Moderate, middle ground. Mo no, you're not. You yeah. are the left-wing outlet of the political, or actually of the elites that use politicians to get their shit through. Mm -hmm. So, Bernie Sanders, say what you want about him, is uncorruptible. 
Bernie Sanders is going to do what the fuck he wants to do, and that's it. The people that are the elites that like to use the politicians as puppets, they don't like that. Mm -hmm. What do you mean you're not going to do what we tell you? We need somebody who is willing to do whatever it takes to win, which means whatever we tell you to do, i.e. Elizabeth Warren. Her whole career has been doing whatever it takes to win. I used to be a Republican. Now I'm a Democrat. I used to be Native American. Now I'm a white girl. Mm -hmm. I used to be this. Now that, right? That's what she does. She I used to be young. Now I'm old. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I guess that's how that works. I mean, one thing she didn't flip flop. Uh, not a choice. <laughs> Let's be old now. Uh, so, and Biden, of course, same exact part of a long political system. He'll do whatever it takes to win. He'll do what they tell him to do. CNN realizes, and those political elites and those elites realize that Joe Rogan has the most influential plat platform on the planet and some of these states those hypothetical swing voters who probably yes. voted for Obama in 08 in 2012 but then turned around and voted for Trump mm -hmm. those are the people like even somebody like Joe Joe uh, endorsed Gary Johnson in 2016 but this year he's feeling Bernie that's those are the hypothetical swing voters that can swing elections that those two to three million people and Nancy Pelosi wasn't trying to upset when she didn't want to impeach Trump initially, mm -hmm. those are the people Joe Rogan is and, talking and to. The, and there are plenty of states we could talk about right now, I'm sure, that were decided by a few thousand votes. Okay? Now, when you have a podcast like Rogan's, it's getting hundreds of millions of downloads. Right? Hundreds of, uh, around the world. But here, and the podcast is centrist in nature because you have all these people from different walks Absolutely. of life coming in. If you listen to Joe Rogan's podcast, you cannot say they lean one way. That's it. So you now, you, now you have influence over those voters. If he says, I like Bernie... Those people are going to potentially like Bernie and they can sway an election. Now, the, the elites in this country do not want any one person that is not bought by a system to sway voters in a certain direction. They don't like independent thinkers, thinkers having power. They don't like you having power. They do not like you having power. Matter of fact, they're probably infuriated by it. I'm sure. Yeah. So it's like when that happens... They go, we have to take away his power. Now, how can we take away his power? We can't shut down his platform, but we can discredit him. We can't make him radioactive Absolutely. so that him supporting a candidate would make the candidate go, I actually shun that support. I'm going to tell you why that will never work. It'll never work because the people who like Joe Rogan all that shit y'all was put rehashing, they, they heard care. it already. And they don't care. They listen <laughs> to it. They don't give a fuck. And we know how bullshit CNN is. We know how bullshit Fox News is. We know how bullshit all these news organizations yeah. are. We know that they're fake, right? Like, we know that they're here with a political objective to keep the status quo for the people that run them. That's oh, yeah. all it, they're it, used it, for. It they're was not all the political. News. None of that shit had anything to do with Joe Rogan, ladies and gentlemen. That shit had everything to do with somebody... Not liking Bernie Sanders. By the way, again, again, they about to set Bernie up again. And you know, who the same way the DNC did him Trump. in 2016, they're gonna try to do that shit to him again in 2020 because he's incorruptible. If he picks up steam and he, it looks like he's about to be the nominee. I'm, is, I'm telling it you, it's happen. gonna happen. They'll find a way to cheat him out. They'll use the super delegates like the Democrats do to to literally strip. Our votes away. I am a registered Democrat. You are going to strip my fucking vote away with these stupid super delegates. And why would you cannibalize like yourself you if you're a liberal? If you're a liberal, right? And you know how powerful Joe Rogan's platform is. And you know Joe Rogan can probably, you know, not only sway those hypothetical swing voters, but sway maybe some conservatives too to say, you know what? Maybe I will look into this Bernie guy. If you know that, why would you get in the way of that? Why would you cannibalize that momentum for Bernie Sanders? Because those people don't care about party. They care about policy, right? All these like elites that are Democrat, they're not real Democrats. They don't really care about trans rights or gay rights or women's rights. They're just rich people that are on that side of the party. And they use these different uh, hot button topics to manipulate people into voting, right? You think the rich white people that run the Democratic Party give a fuck about poor black people? They haven't done anything for poor black people for fucking no. the entire time the parties existed. So why would they start giving a fuck now? They just manipulate you to continue getting them elected so they can push the policies through that help them save money and resources. You know, That's so the whole weird. fucking game. Conservatives are, are it's so weird that they're starting to promote like they give a fuck about black people. Because they I think on some level they're starting they're going, "Oh shit. Black people are getting privy to the fact that Democrats actually don't really give a fuck about them. Yeah, because like, I mean, if you look like, you you know, even with Donald Trump's messaging of, <clears throat> the you know, African-American un un unemployment is super low and, you know, we've created more jobs for black and brown people mm -hmm. and the First Step Act, you know, when you see that and even the fact that, you know, at one point Donald Trump was running ads on Breakfast Club videos. Yeah. Because you can't, 
on, on YouTube, you can't do anything about that. Yeah. Like, like that's, it's, it's free, what do you call it? Free market? I don't know what the fuck they call Dude, it. Dude, Donald Trump but, was running an ad on my video where as a joke, I talk about him grabbing pussy. There were Trump ads being run on the video. By the way, <laughs> talk about though, Andrew, I listen. I not believe it. But no, what you said, think about that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I, when I, I was with Mayor Pete in South Carolina last week and yeah. Mayor Pete said something to the effect of, Republicans and Donald Trump mm -hmm. will do anything that they have to do to stay in power. And it was in reference to me asking him about, you know, closed door campaign fundraisers and, you know, taking money from billionaires. And Pete doesn't have a problem with that. Yeah. Pete was like, yo, just because somebody gives me their money don't mean I'm going to be beholden to them. And if they're going to so give me, say. if they're going to give me their money yeah. and think that I'm going to be beholden to them, then they shouldn't give me their money. Right. I like that. I like that. Right. So he said that talking about Trump and he was saying basically how Trump then will do whatever it is to stay in power. Now, with that said, Trump will put that video on your grabbing by the pussy video. Why? Because he knows people is watching. Mm -hmm. He'll put the videos on Breakfast Club videos. Because he knows Even people if, it's, if it's Democrats, he, it's usually on the presidential candidate interviews. Mm -hmm. If he knows Democrats are only talking shit about him, because he knows people is watching. Bernie Sanders knows Joe Rogan has an audience. Why not let people know Joe Rogan said he would vote for Bernie Sanders? Joe Rogan, this guy that uh, endorsed the Libertarian in 2016. He likes to hunt. He likes all the conservative shit. But he said he would endorse Bernie Sanders. Why wouldn't you promote that? And why would you be mad at Bernie for promoting that? Who are these perfect people that y'all are out here seeking in America? Nobody. Who are these people that say the right thing all the time, have never offended anyone, have never... Don't exist. They, they, no! Don't exist. That's not America. Don't exist, but they use it as a tool to get you to obey them. They go, hey, you've got some fucked up shit in your past. We're going to talk about that Unless you push this bill through, unless you take this policy, unless you, whatever. I it's used to say, I'll talk about it first, but that means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I know. We've learned the hard way. No, one. <laughs> you can talk about it first, but they don't give a fuck until they put their sauce on that it. That shit works in eight miles. Ah, your season, it means nothing. All right? <laughs> okay, watch this season and I put on it. This is the dish everybody's going to eat, God damn it. It but is bullshit. It's it is, bullshit. It, was it is, it is an, I mean, it's just annoying um, I think Joe handled it the best way, which is just you keep on going, you keep on enjoying, you keep on doing your shows. And he's in this rare air where he actually has more influence than the companies that are shitting on him. So no matter what they say, he still is in there. He still is in the people's ears yeah. four days a week. And they're hearing his side of it and they have way more trust in him than they do these traditional news sources because these news sources have lied so much and has been exposed. So they're like, all right, well, I'm going to ride with my guy. Yeah, I don't like when I see headlines like, um, when they say, oh, Joe Rogan has a history of making transphobic and racist comments. No. It should say Joe Rogan has made what can be perceived as transphobic and, Even and, and racist debatable. comments. Even that's The trans debatable. one is. He said himself that the Planet of the Apes was racist. So, yes, you can say that. But don't say it's a history. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Well, history there, means there. that you do this constantly over and over and over and yeah. over. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't like that shit at all. But it goes into our next thing I want to talk about. People really don't care. I was on the phone debating with Van about this Joe Rogan. Who's my guy, Van Lathan? About the Joe Rogan stuff. Mm -hmm. Sunday Talk morning. Yeah. Sunday morning. It was morning in LA. It was yeah. afternoon. I was in Atlantic City at my daughter Chilean competition. I was in a hotel. I'm debating with Van about this. Get a text from Debbie Dev. Debbie Dev texts me and she goes, No, not Kobe. And I'm in my mind, I'm like, Well, Kobe, what he I know, I know you didn't get caught cheating again because black yeah. men don't cheat. So what the yeah. hell happened? And it and, and I she sent me the link and I clicked on it. I go, yo, in the middle of the conversation, we was debating. I go, yo. He probably think I'm about to yell about some more Joe shit. I'm like, <laughs> Yo, they said Kobe Bryant dead. Everything shifts. Yeah. Gone. What happened? What happened to the Joe Rogan? Yeah. Burn shit? Gone. Bye. The, yeah. the, everything. Energy. Everybody energy shifted. Yeah. E Nobody really cares. Just distraction. It's a, and it Just makes me so sad. Yeah. Because what's next after this? Think about it. I want everybody, to, I, I want y'all to remember these moments because you can, you don't even have to go back that far. You can go back to Nipsey 10 months ago. Think about how everybody cares and everybody's like, oh, we love each other and, you know, make sure you hug your people and tell them that you love them and this mm -hmm. and that, yada, yada. What, what's going to, what's going to distract us from this? Something. It's come, it's, uh, it's only a matter of time. Something. After the funeral happens, it's only a matter of time. People really don't care like they say they care. And I'm not saying they don't care about Kobe. I'm just saying that we can be so easily distracted. I mm -hmm. know y'all don't really give a fuck about the Joe Rogan shit. 
Yeah. That was just something for y'all to tweet about. Yeah. This is something that you actually truly do care about. But even mm-hmm. this. You will move on. You will move on. Bro. That's why I love when Duval would always go, what y'all fake caring about today? Oof. Because he, he realized it's fake care. Well, even if you really care. Because by the way, fake caring is the Joe Rogan shit. Yeah. Really caring is the Kobe shit. Yeah. But people will move on. You see it on Facebook and Instagram. I used to time people. I used to see them change their profile picture to someone who passed. And then I'd count how many weeks until they changed it back yeah, or how yeah, many yeah. days. And you're basically saying at that point, like, all right, we don't need to care that much that this yeah. person's dead anymore. It's more important that there's a picture of me on a beach. You think they'll make it to the Super Bowl? You think the Super Bowl will, 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 will shift the energy? I think the Super Bowl will, will probably give some sort of homage to him. Because this is the biggest death in America, I think, since JFK. Michael Jackson. No, nah, Michael Jackson was like weird and dead already Michael and Jackson. he was on drugs and he like looked, Michael Jackson bro he looked odd Michael Jackson I, I'm with you Michael I, Jackson. my initial thing was Michael Jackson but like Michael Jackson was just in such a state he, he just put out like a bunch of like albums no one cared about and while he was way more iconic than Kobe um, he just Kobe was still in his prime and beloved right matter of fact Kobe was probably more beloved in his retirement than he was while he was playing yeah, but still Michael, bro. Michael stopped the world. Like, literally. Michael, like, I watch, you know, if you, if, and, and I saw on Sunday, things stopped for Kobe. Like, but it was also Sunday. Yeah. So, what would have happened on CNN if it was Monday coverage of the impeachment? You know mm. what I'm saying? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On a Sunday, yeah, we just talking about all the old shit that happened the last week so we can break in with the Kobe stuff, yada, yada, yada. Because yeah. they went right back to regularly scheduled programming on Monday. Right. The Sports Network stayed on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think music, um, I was trying to debate, what's more universal, music or sports? Music. By far, right? By, it's not, nothing compares to music. Michael Jackson sold 75 million records with Thriller, man. There's no question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, no yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, he was past, he was past the stage of Michael Jackson. I don't know. I thought that too until he died. Really? The world, st- June 25th, 2009. Okay. The world I won't stopped. I won't I won't debate that one. I think it's close. But it was one of those deaths where it was like he was such a profound part of everybody that was alive's life. Second big now, and listen, I don't even want to talk like that because it sounds stupid. I was gonna say second most impactful I've seen, but I yeah, man. I've never yeah. I've never seen anything like that in sports. Because if there's if there's one set of humans on the planet that seem indestructible, mm. that seem like Myth, mystical, mythical creatures. Yeah. Right? Like that just seem larger than life that you don't think things like this would happen to. Spanish women? It's athletes. Oh, athletes. Right? Yeah, yeah, Especially yeah, 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 somebody yeah, yeah, who's yeah, in yeah. the rare yeah. air yeah. that Kobe Bryant was in. Yeah. We not this is this is God level yeah. basketball talent. Yeah. Like you're talking about in the history of the NBA. No, you're right. You're only putting like you're only really discussing three or four people with Kobe. Yeah. Magic, Jordan, Michael. I'm. I'll talk Bron now. I'll Bron. talk Bron now. Yeah. But Kobe was always my number three, but behind Magic and Michael, very rare air and the tragic, the tragedy of it, bro. I've yeah. never seen something that tragic. Now that's because you know, and I hate to say it like this, man, but you know, when you see somebody get shot, we've seen that. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's easier to wrap our head around. Yeah, why somebody got shot you know what I mean like okay somebody got shot but when you see and, and you feel like you can avoid that right you, know, you get security you, get, you know you get whatever it is like it's you, you don't go to the hood whatever it is you feel yeah. like it but whatever it is but when you see something like that yeah. a helicopter crash with your daughter when you're just doing your regular everyday Sunday mm-hmm. routine as a father like yeah. I was literally out on Sunday doing extracurricular activities with my daughter I was in Atlanta I said, did I say extracurricular t- activities no <laughs> Said activities. I did. You sure? I am a hundred percent sure. Because <laughs> okay. I, I would be too... horrified if what? you said it. What? I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, so what I was, extracurricular activities. I was at yeah. my daughter's cheerleading competition in Atlantic City. Yeah. When I got that news, yeah. I had to sit down because I was having a panic attack. Yeah. What What did you go through as a father with young girls? Well, I didn't know that his daughter died at first. Hey. I thought it was just him. So, so when immediately, you found that. as a man, this yeah. is this 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 me as a man. I'm yeah. like. That is my worst nightmare. Mm-hmm. Something like that happening to me and me not being here for my family. Yeah. Like that's immediately where my mind went. Like, yeah. man, he's not gonna be able to watch his kids grow up. I was thinking about his daughter that played basketball because I didn't know she died yet. Then 
these fucking dumb ass. Oh, by the way, we really got to, I've been telling y'all this for years. Some Orson Welles War of the World shit is going to happen because of social media. Mm. How the fuck did y'all go from Rick Fox being dead to his four kids being dead? How did all of this happen in a matter of 30, 40 minutes? Now, the kids, I can understand your speculation about that. Why the fuck would Rick Fox be with Kobe Bryant I don't on a random that. Sunday morning? I don't understand. Does that. anybody wonder why Rick Fox died on Sunday? Yeah. So as a father, I, at first I was just like, damn, that's fucked up. He no longer here. But yeah. then when I found out his daughter died, I'm like, that's the two worst nightmares, right? The two yeah. worst nightmares is you not here for your kids or something happening to your kids. Right. And then I started thinking about the last moments in that helicopter. Like, ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. What do you do? What do you say? So your, your job as a protect and provide as a father. What do you do in that moment? So apparently, um, I, we I was at this Patrice O'Neill be- benefit. Rest in peace, the goat man, and uh, that they do every year. And uh, Bill Burr was performing, and Bill Burr does a lot of uh, helicopter flying himself. Mm-hmm. And you're familiar with comedian Bill Burr, yeah, yeah. And then uh, so I asked him about it, and he actually knew the air traffic control guy that was talking to the pilot of the thing, and mm-hmm. he basically broke down how they flew. And um, he said they sh- the pilot should have never taken, taken them in there. Not yeah. even taken off, never taken them into that basin because it was all this fog in this valley. So you come right over a mountain and then the hole underneath the mountain is this valley all covered in fog. They say he couldn't see. So they couldn't see. He was blinded by the fog. Couldn't see anything. And um, they said he was, too, he was too low that the air traffic controllers didn't have him on the radar to tell yep, him the direction. 100%. Yeah. And, uh, and then so apparently what happened is they were going 185 miles per hour and they just went right into the side of the mountain. So th- it wasn't like propellers are out. You know, you're going to die and you're holding your baby girl in, in your arms, trying to keep her, you know, calm while she's on her way to her death. It was instant. Which, I hope so, man. Which is I know the that best sounds, case scenario yes, of the yes, worst man. case, right? Yes, man. Cause I was sitting there. I was like, I hope they didn't burn up in the hell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. God damn, yo. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and when I heard that they recovered, all the bodies that made me feel better too. Cause that let me know that, you know, maybe it was instant. What? Maybe they did, they, they did just crash. Can I ask you and a question. Die. What is our fascination with, um, with the body? Like I've, I've seen this a lot. Like, you know, these people were lost and they were never found or something like that. And then the bodies were never recovered or closure. It, so we don't believe that someone's closure. dead until the body is that. I think it? it's closure. I think it's closure, yeah. and also you don't want to just think that you know you love this person, right? Like, yeah, like we're we're spirits. We're all spirits, right? Yeah, yeah. In, a, in a in a in a human existence, but there's somebody out there that loves your human existence. Yeah. There's somebody out there that loves your nose. So, yeah. like, I'm serious. Like, I'm just saying. I'm gonna find no. her. <laughs> I'm, no. I'm gonna find like, her, bro. My wife. Loves, a lot my love. wife loved me in my discoloration. She loved me when I scraped yeah. the toast. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> when you scrape the toast, when you got rid of your, <laughs> yeah, right? so 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 yo, you are stupid. So, bro. <laughs> so you don't want to think that this body is just out there. You know what I mean? Getting eaten, eaten on by animals, whatever. Like that's still this mean this vessel. Right. Even though it's nothing but a vessel, it means something to someone. That's so why the they want to take this vessel, put it in a box, yeah. have the ceremony. They want we got to do this for this vessel, even yeah. though it's a total waste of money. By the way, what the idea? The, uh, everything. The funeral, funeral. is there. Every, everything. It's a total waste of money. Yeah. But you you have this vessel that you still want to celebrate. You want to make sure this vessel is in a good place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it might give people. Some, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Some peace of mind. Peace of mind. When they can go to a gravesite. Why do you think it's. Put, put your, put, get on the microphone. Hmm? So Taylor asked, why do you think it's a waste of money for a funeral? Why don't we have funeral for deers that are on the side of the road, just sitting there decaying? We don't know the deers. That's not true. We have funeral. They're still lives. I'm just saying with a funeral, like you just said, like going to the grave, it gives you like a peace of mind or whatever. Yeah. The same thing with a funeral. They I have would ra- talks. I, I, I think I would rather be cremated. Really? Yeah, because think about it. Like, think about it, right? Yes. This, as, as arrogant as we want to be as human beings, right. this this version of us is not always going to exist. Right. Like humans are going to evolve. Right. Do you know how many grave sites these buildings are built on? <laughs> I've been thinking about that. Like, like, you know how many grave, you know how many people had these funerals back in the day and they yeah. cried and they teared yeah, up yeah, yeah, and they yeah. buried people in the South and in California, wherever else. Yeah. And now it's a Starbucks on top of that shit. Well, some of these, I think we could admit that some of these, what are they called? 
uh, where the, the dead people are. Where Grave sites? Graveyards? No, it's called a graveyard. Cemetery. Yeah. Cemetery. Yeah, I think some of these cemeteries, I think, are occupying good real estate and they could be, you know, used for other things. Eventually they will. It's going to be something. I don't know. It could be a flood. It could be an earthquake. It's going to be something that knocks those headstones off and we're going to be gone. And the next generation of people are not even going to know they walking on the remains of Charlemagne the God and Andrew Schultz. <laughs> Okay, until they, just, until they just randomly hear dick talk dick in the sandwich. middle of the night. And they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it is an odd thing, though, to have a cemetery. It is an odd thing. I mean, it's a, take it's, up all that space. But, it's a know, lot of space. I'm telling you, go to, go to South Carolina and let them take you on a ghost tour at Charleston and have them describe to you all the buildings that were built on top of Old cemeteries. Life moves on. Yeah. We just get rid of the cemetery. They knock That's the headstones. Get out the way. Like, it's just they, they, some people don't even have headstones. Yeah, I know. And also, you have to take a trip to the cemetery when you could just have the ashes in your house. It's yeah. way more convenient. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't. I don't know. My, yeah. my dad used to always say he's cremate. He would like to be cremated and then uh, use him as fertilizer. That's what my dad used to always say. So that he can be part of the the, the trees or whatever in the background. Know. My dad yeah. wants to be sprinkled in the ocean. I've heard that too. In the ocean. Yeah. Why? Can he swim? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lie. pool too, by the way. I know. Okay. You grew up with Kobe. You know she grew up with Kobe, right? Allegedly. There you go. See, now, stop. No, no. Can I say on a serious tip? On a serious tip, she yeah. posted the photo of her and Kobe. Oh my Instagram God, has that uh, new shit that they can detect Photoshop. They flagged the picture. That's all I'm saying. No, they did not. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. They flagged the picture. They flagged the picture. No, Taylor. they did not. But on a serious tip, um, I just want to say like this Kobe thing hit very hard, especially in Low Marion. Because he did, he contributed a lot to Low Marion. Yeah. And then that's when I the would high say, school Kobe went to in Philly, and, and that's, that's the high school Taylor went to. And when I would say Low Marion, they're like, oh, Kobe school. Like, yeah. it's just a lot, a lot. It's really heavy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, listen, it's definitely the worst. Uh, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, it's the worst sports death I've ever seen in my life. I I can't remember the last time a sport. And Shaq hit that shit on the head when he was talking about like, yo, I've met Bill Russell. Bill Russell was old. You know, Dr. J. He was just naming all of these basketball icons that are still around. And he's like, yo, Kobe not going to be here. Like, they're not going to be able to get old and. They'll talk shit to each other. He's not going to be able to give his Hall of Fame speech next year. By the way, you motherfuckers are so stupid and y'all piss me off so bad. When y'all, when they announced that Kobe was getting inducted into the 2020 Hall of Fame, people was like, why somebody got to die? Why they got to wait till somebody died and inducted him in the Hall of Fame? <laughs> like, like Kobe wasn't getting in. <laughs> first ballot. <laughs> this is just the first year he was eligible for nomination. They already had announced that he was a, a nominee. Him, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, he was going to be a unanimous yeah. First ballot Hall of Famer, undeniable, undeniable. That's it. I heard but, a good. I heard a good Kobe joke though. I don't want to hear it from you. No, no, this is good. <laughs> Your idea of a good Kobe joke. No, probably. this is good. I okay. got to shout out Tony Hinchcliffe with this joke. It was a good joke. Uh, he goes, he goes, uh, Kobe passing never. <laughs> I get it. That's you have to understand. You have to understand for the situation, right? I, and how I like it. It's a good joke. It's not tasteless because because yeah. the joke is about legacy, right? If the joke is about what we remember about Kobe, it's not making light of his death. It's going. I this is we're all feeling in the moment. This is unbelievable. I can't believe this happened. And he took the feeling of I can't believe this happened, yeah. and he gave it purpose. It's. It, I thought Tony Hinchcliffe. That's Great a comedian. good joke, Tony. And and I thought it was just double entendre. There it is. It's a double entendre. It's a double I like entendre. It. I like it. I, I just like thought it. like it it shows that not every joke about a tragedy has to take advantage of the tragedy. Right? Yeah. There yeah, are jokes yeah, about yeah, the tragedy yeah. that you can speak to how we all feel about it and can still offer a chuckle or a smile in a really fucking dark time. Yeah, yeah, I thought your, it was great. your man is lame though. Who's that? What's his name? Oh, Ari. You know why he's yeah. lame? Yeah. That he, was not a joke. It wasn't a fucking joke. Yes. You can't hide behind the guise of a comedian when it wasn't a joke. Yeah. There was no joke. There's there was no, no setup. There was no punchline. There's you no got joke. on motherfucking Instagram and you was like, a, 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 you're, a, you're a fucking rapist died today or some shit like that. Yeah. The world is a beautiful place. Whatever the fuck you yeah, say. Yeah. There was no joke. You made, no an, joke. you made a statement, right? So being that you made a statement, yeah. you had an opinion on the situation, you called a brother a rapist, uh, and, and, and that was it. Don't yeah. hide behind, oh, it was a comedian, I'm trying to be funny. Like, no. 
No. Yeah. And the thing that is... Y'all should banish him from the comedy community for that. No. Because you can't misuse the title comedian, Schultz. If you're going to use the title comedian, yeah. it has to be with a joke. Here's... Okay, I, co- I completely agree. And I won't defend non-jokes. I defend jokes. Yes. And I defend yes. the attempts at jokes. So yes. even if you made an attempt at a joke, I would yes. defend you. But there wasn't even an attempt at no joke. No attempt. You just said things that are, that are, that are true or something You turned into like a white that. feminist. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you did, Ari. Like, Ari, you got That's on the him. most offensive part of it. <laughs> you, you turned, turned into <laughs> one of these white women. Yes. <laughs> crying about... Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you turned into a to white Jezebel. feminist. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, go write a fucking blog. Yo, you turned into a white feminist blogger. That's hilarious. That's the most, that's that's the most did, offensive bro. thing he did. But what I'll say is this, is what Ari does is when anybody dies and he does this with close friends of his that died, he does one of these kind of rants about it, one of tweets about it. He did it about Tom Petty. He did it about Ralphie May, a comedian that was a good buddy of his, right? Um, so there is like, there if, you, if, you're, if you're a really devout Ari fan and he has tons of fans, I think they understood the context of what was going on. Then he said he... He didn't know at the time, like you didn't know at the time, that his daughter was in there, that there are other innocent I people. I don't give there. a fuck. I, listen, I'm not defending it. What I'm saying is the context of which it was said. There's still no joke. And furthermore, he took it down. He took the video down. And said he got hacked. And he, no, no, he did that as a... He did that as sarcasm. He leaned in oh. with the hacking. He was like, oh, I was act like making fun of people go, I yeah, was yeah, hacked. Yeah. So he leaned in and then he took it down. Now, if you take it down, I don't got to defend you because you're not defending you. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, if yeah, a comedian yeah, yeah. is out there going, I'm standing by my joke. You know, like when we had that whole shit with Nicki Minaj or whatever, and they were like, apologize, apologize. I'm not apologizing because I'm going to stand by what I said. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, then we defend that. But if you're not going to stand by what you said, you can't expect the community to stand by what you said. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like... And it wasn't a joke. There's There's no no, joke. There's no comic that should stand by that because he did not make a joke. He turned into a white feminist blogger. Yeah. And he... I I really think... That's funny, Yo, I really think he thought he was going to get a bunch of praise. I really think he thought that all of those, those feminists... We're gonna be like, yes, uh, Ari. He don't want them. Yes, that. I don't know. I, I think he was just trying to troll all the people, and he was just trying to. I don't think maybe he was a little detached to how beloved Kobe was. Clearly, yeah, and he's Clearly. he's in LA, so you should know. But I, every interaction I've had with Ari has been a good interaction. That he's a sweet dude and a kind dude, and uh, and a very funny guy, very funny on stage. And it really sucks that this situation happened because obviously, as comics, people come to us. How do you feel about this? And all of us feel the same way. Where's the joke? There's nothing funny there. And that's why I said the Tony joke, because the Tony joke is a joke that's Tony, funny. The Tony joke is perfect, because if you're a comedian and, you know, somebody says, how do you feel about, you know, you know Kobe dying? You'd be like, yo, my first reaction was Kobe passing? No. <laughs> and you let, you let it sit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> People yeah. get it. That's it. They get it. Yeah. You know, and the reason I ask if it was too soon, because I saw somebody, I don't know who posted it. Somebody posted, um, yo, if you got any good... I don't know if it was, if it, if, I don't know if it was any good Kobe jokes. It was something to that. If you got any good Kobe jokes, like let us know, like you know, to lighten the mood, right? Yeah. And then I saw Jess Hilarious post a meme of Kobe and Jesus playing one on one, Jesus crossing them over, mm-hmm. and then it was this whole debate in the comments, like Kobe will wash Jesus, right? Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah. got on sandals, which is fu- like all that's because now we're living his legacy, yes, man. We're supporting man. his. Like, th- there's no rule that says you can't make jokes. But there, there not about be a joke. him though. Yeah, or anything. Not, it, no, no, no. It's not just about gotta the, be funny. Not about the death. Exactly. I don't want to hear no. Even the Tony no, joke is about the death, but it's it, it's funny. It's and not about the tragedy of it. It's exactly. Not like, like how back in the day when uh, dude was playing the airplane stuff after Aaliyah died. No, right, right. That's right, just right. tasteless. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but if yeah. it's like. Because what's the joke there? There's no joke, That's bro. the thing. No. It's like, just because you say no. something that's shocking doesn't mean it's a joke. A joke involves something clever and some misdirection. Tony one was clever. Look, Double you entendre. need bare minimum yes. misdirection for a joke to work. So if we're just breaking down the science of a joke, and I hate doing that because I think jokes would come here in your fucking soul. But if we're doing the science of it, there needs to be some bait and switch. Yeah, there man. There's some misdirect, some double entendre, some alliteration, play on words, something. Not just a shocking description of something. That's not a joke. And I think that's why he got crucified. And he's got to know that. And if he wants to continue doing the death thing, you better come with some funny. Man. y'all. Because well, I'll defend funny to the end. I'm different. I'm from the South, man. I don't play with death, yo. Like I believe in spirits and I believe in... 
yeah. energy and all of that. Like, there's no reason to be playing with the death of somebody. Like, what Tony did is funny. That makes a lot of sense. But just to be... Because you're, cause you're remembering the life. The joke is about his life. Yes. That's, it's, just, it's a double entendre on his, wor- on his words. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? On, on, yeah, yeah. on his life. And like yeah. they always say Kobe never would pass yeah, in yeah. games. Like, that makes perfect sense. I get yeah. that. But just to be making jokes about... Somebody tragically dying? Nah, bro. And you better... Boy, I hope you be, know how to fight. I hope you got guns. Because people, somebody going to see you about this shit. Well, especially when it comes to somebody like Kobe. That was the thing, man. It's like... Because sports may not be as universal as music, but there's nothing that brings people together like sports. That is a great point. There's race, a, a no, racist that, and a black person yo, could be root Lakers fans. That a is blood a and a crypt could be point. Lakers fans. It unites groups that ne- sports unites groups that never interact together way better than music because music might happen once a year with a concert, but basketballs happen three yes, times a week. Yes, sir. That wow, that's a really you great can be observation. In a bar, you could be in a bar high five. Listen, if I walk down the street, yeah, come June. Yeah, and not even I don't even gotta say that. If I go, if I go to Miami this weekend, yeah, with Kansas City gear on, our uh, who the fuck they playing? Um, 49ers, 49ers gear on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got so many friends. There's millions of 49ers yeah. fans down there right now. Millions of Chiefs fans. And guess what? I got a bunch of enemies too, cause they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck what my race is, my gender is. They're looking at that jacket. Like, fuck you, you 49er fan. Fuck you, you fucking cheese fan. Like, there's nothing that brings people together like sports. It is religious in that way. Oh, come on, man. 100%. It is religious in that. And the second you walk in that church, you can look around going, all right, I know I got some shit in common with these people. Absolutely. That is interesting. It doesn't maybe... No, it does. It's different. It's different, but when... Something happens to someone in sports, you're dealing with the smoke of all the people who fuck with them. You're dealing with like legacy. You're dealing with 20 years of fan smoke. And it's not even the people that fuck with them. It's the people that hate him. Because they didn't hate him personally. They hated him because he used to bust their team's ass. Yeah. Now that he's retired, now that he's passed away, I can give it up for him. Yo, but you know what? And that's something that I, that, that caught me about specifically the Kobe thing is that... <clears throat> We, especially with sports, right? We spend so much time and energy hating people that we don't know only because they're playing for a city that's not ours, right? Mm-hmm. And I, th- I did this with Jordan, right? I hated Jordan because he was on a different team and he would bust my team's ass. And thank God I matured a little bit and he looked a little vulnerable when he came back that I actually started rooting for him, right? So I got to experience some of the greatness from the side of rooting for it. And that shit right there, Flipped the switch for me about not only sports, but like creatives and all these other people. I'm not going to fucking hate on great work and miss out on greatness. Like if you are great. Absolutely. I'm going to enjoy your Absolutely. fucking greatness. Absolutely. I don't care how I feel about you personally. Absolutely. If you got some greatness, I'm going to enjoy it because that's just stupid. Man. I'm not a Patriots fan at all, but I love seeing Tom Brady go, go against time. I'm not going to lie. I love to see it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I love it. I love even when I don't like a team. Like I like when I see you know, legacy players leave with a championship, even if that's not my squad. You know yeah. what I mean? I just feel like that's how you're supposed to go out yeah. when you're a champ. And, you know, I, I guess the final thing I say about Kobe, man, to me, this is just a... Uh, it's just you another... never spoke about your daughter thing. I'm curious about that before you wrap that up. Well, I said, no, I said, that's just my... When you found out that he lost his daughter, what was the reaction there? Because the initial reaction was you thought it was just him. It was a little shock at first. And I, and I immediately went into protection mode okay. as if I can protect something like that from happening. Because it just seemed like such a freak accident, like on yeah. some Final Destination shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I just kind of like went automatically into protection mode. And I had to just like, and I was like that the whole day. And then even, you know, driving back from Atlantic you, City. What was it like driving back? Was it, were you were you extra safe? Were you 65 miles per hour. Not even playing the games, speed right? Speed limit. Isn't that interesting? All day, every day. Isn't speed limit. You know what I mean? But I'm, I drive like that anyway. Like, I, I, I hate, my wife is 90 miles per hour. And I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what are you in a rush to do? Yeah. Die? Yeah. Get pulled over so I die and get yeah. shot by police. I just, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> why you? Why we don't need none of these problems? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, officer, she was driving. <laughs> I just, that's, that's immediately how I felt. I just felt like I felt very protective. Yeah. But it's like you can't. There's certain things you just can't. You have no control. You over. have no fucking control over. And to argue against the reality of that 
is crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's, and just think you about that. Submit to life. You got to submit way. to yeah. life. Yeah. I don't even think we live in, bro. I just think we exist in. And what I mean by that is, like right now, we're just existing, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, like anybody could be alive. You could live, but yeah. the reason I say existing is because your existence is after this is gone too. Yeah. Because Kobe still exists. Yeah. He just don't exist in the physical form anymore. So I don't even like to just say. I just like to say, yo, we're just existing. Mm. That's it. And and that, that's just how I feel. You're existing physically for a while, and then you're not. Now you're just existing spiritually. But truthfully, you always exist spiritually because it's your spirit that people talk about. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Unless you mm. fucking Chris Helmsworth or Denzel or somebody. You know what I mean? But other than that, it's your spirit people constantly talk about. It's what you yeah. put inside of people. You know what I mean? It's like I, I was listening to you on Whitney Cummings, and Whitney was talking about how she goes to you all the time for advice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I think about my homegirls who come to me for advice all the time. My home, like. That's a spit. That's something that's gonna live on way after you're gone. Yeah. So you're always gonna exist within these people. So I don't even like to say we we live in. We just we're existing. Yeah. And we're gonna hopefully we just keep existing. We're not gonna exist physically. That's gonna go away. Then just hopefully stay around existing spiritually, and then that's it. You know. Yeah. But yeah, I just my my final thought is just like your death doesn't discriminate, and I feel like that just that's all this situation told us. And. And our ego sometimes makes it, makes us think it does, right? Our ego thinks, oh, successful people, they don't get in freak accidents. Rich. Rich people. Famous. Yeah. Status. Um, you know, like I said, he's just like a mythical creature. Like, things like that don't, this guy has been the most blessed person his whole life. Yeah, yeah. His whole physical existence. Yeah. And something that tragic, that unlucky happens to him? Yeah. Nah, man. He wasn't what? Start talking to the mic, huh? He wasn't troubled, though. Like, everyone else that passed away, like, the juice world, maybe, and, like, like you could, they already had drug problems, so it's not necessarily, I want to say it was surprising. I understand but, what you're trying you know what to say. You what I'm saying? Like, you're saying that, like, this is not. You didn't uh, see it coming. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a, a Hollywood, what is it called? A Hollywood story? Remember those true Hollywood <laughs> stories where, like, an actor or something ends up dying, but he went through this really dark path yeah. and then he ends up overdosing, et cetera. Exactly. This is somebody whose life seems to be getting even better after sports, which we never thought would happen to Kobe. He talks about his dog period though. Yeah, yeah, he did. He yeah, did. He, he talked about his dog period. He was on a, uh, my man, um, drum, drum show. Was it drum? Drum? DJ drama. Drum. What's, tra what's the but, name of John's podcast? But yeah, he talked about his dark side on there. Yeah. But he I, attacked I, retirement in the same way that he attacked basketball, right? He's, a, he's like, I get in weight, I start to do this, and I realize, nah, this is not the life. And he really invested in family and business and all these other things. And mm -hmm. I think, yeah, that's one of the reasons why it was, uh, it was so tragic for us as fans because we saw someone, and this is very rare, who was so obsessed with their sport and the success in their sport. And usually those people fall apart in retirement. They get alcohol problems or they're smoking cigars all the time. They're just trying to replace their gambling. They're just trying to place that, that edge that they got, that high they got from competing. And he seemed to transition into like fatherhood, yeah. like so seamlessly. Yeah, man. And then to have that shut down like that, man. Yeah, to end like that. Like that's not, to, you know. You, you, Does it make you question life and like the purpose everything i felt like that with nipsey though I, I i felt like that like i don't even know if i believe in karma no more Talk and, I, to and me. I'm, I'm sure i've said that on the podcast before because i don't i think karma is just an action like you should do good because you want to do good i don't think mm. that you should do good and expect that good things are going to happen to you in return because how many mm. times are we going to say things like the good die young you know what i'm saying how many times mm. are we going to ask the question why do you know bad things happen to good people mm. right and and you can't you know, that's why I hate when I see these white feminists saying, you know, things about Kobe's past, you know, because if 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 that is the karma for being accused of rape and getting mm. acquitted in court, why did it have to affect everybody else in that helicopter? Because mm. to me, if 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 karma if, if that's the case, karma has karma coming back to it. Because mm. karma didn't have to take those young girls. Mm. What did those young girls do? You understand what I'm saying? Like, mm. like what did what, what did that that mom do that she got taken away from her parents? What did that father and that other wife and that that and the, and the wife and her and his daughter? What did they do? Like, mm. so I don't I don't even know if I believe in karma, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. I just think that you should do good because you genuinely want to do good. I think karma is just an action. 
What if, what if we uh, live within our karma, meaning by doing good things, we actually feel good doing them. So it's not like I help a homeless person and then two months later, I get a little help from someone, but the actual action of doing makes me feel good. That's why I say karma is an action. Yeah, you hit it. That's exactly yeah. it. That's exactly why I say karma is an action. Because we're just, not it's waiting for a payback. The nope. payback's built into nope. it. It's like every time you help somebody and you get to feel... You get to feel that high that you get from helping. That's the karma. That's why they say your true purpose in life is service to others. I did something for somebody. It made yeah. me feel good. I don't care what that person does for Isn't me. Isn't it crazy how all these religions really say the same shit about humanity and like the human condition? They just got different words. Absolutely. So it's like, what what is that? Faith? I always forget these. Faith without works is dead. And then what, what was the, the the doing service to others? What was the line of service to well, others? Well, that's Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. That's uh, your true purpose in life is service to others. Right. Or maybe that's Russell Simmons. I'm going to give it to Wayne W. Dyer. <laughs> yeah, might be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about karma. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, I don't know if I believe in karma. And, and, and if you're is, a shitty person, I think you also live in that karma. I think people who are, are shitty tend to be less happy unless they're sociopaths. Of course. So it's like you are living... In the anxiety of your actions, look at what you would always say, right? Like how much freer you are now that you're not cheating, right? That is positive karma. Mm -hmm. Is it not? You living a good life and then you feeling good because you're living it, opposed to sneaking around and doing all this other fuck shit and you're having these like negative emotions constantly surround you? That's why you had that skin discoloration, bro. Man, shut up. It was. No, it wasn't. Yeah, if black men don't cheat, you are changing different colors to avoid it. <laughs> man, shut up, man. Right? No, For man. For real. This shit is fucked up. It makes you Look think about- Look how good your skin is now that you're faithful, bro. I'm going to see Dr. Sandy right now, but that no. You're right, I'm though. I'm saying your skin is great because you're, right. you're faithful. No, you're right. Listen, it's it's, it's all about energy. Yeah, but that's a, tr that's a true thing, though, right? Because when I used to cheat, I used to feel bad. Right, mm -hmm. because I knew I was doing something I had no business doing. There so you go. I was, I was, I was wallowing in my own guilt, and that shit will kill you. Yes, you know what I mean? Because then you start. You, you were living in your karma, you, bro. You're living in your karma. You you you, you thinking she doing something wrong, so you uh -huh. looking at her funny, and now you don't know. If, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Isn't that funny when you ain't shit. You assume everyone around you ain't shit. <laughs> I think that's also, the weirdest thing, isn't it? I've been thinking about death too. I think that you. Uh, I think Taylor might have asked me this the other day. Like, you know, I don't know if I believe in hell. I think that oh, yeah, you... I told you that. I, just, I think you leave as pure as you got here. Ooh, go I think, on that. I, I think you leave as pure as you came. I think I think when you die mm -hmm. and all of this, you know, your, your physical existence is gone. Yeah. I, I think you, 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 you return back to wherever you came from just as pure as, as the day you came. You know why I subscribe to that? Because, excuse me, a lot of the people that end up being serial killers or mass murderers and all this kind of stuff, came in pure and then had horrific things happen to them mm -hmm. throughout their childhood and their life that warped them into these people, right? Like, I think Jeffrey Dahmer, one of that, those serial killer guys, I think he was like raped a bunch and like assaulted, all this kind of shit in his life. So he's, his psyche as an innocent little child was abused into becoming this person. So it would low key, it would only be fair to bring him back to his purity when he died mm -hmm. because he didn't ask yeah, man. Shit. A lot of circumstances are out of their control. Yeah, You know, so being that they became these people because of their circumstances, you think God is that cruel? And I think we got to stop giving God credit for some of this stuff, man. Some of this stuff is just human error. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that pilot made a choice. Yeah. And that choice cost everybody in that helicopter their life. Bro. God gives yeah. us free will. God gives us the ability to make choices. We hope God is there to protect us and you know, cover us. But if I take a gun and put it in my head, I'm probably my brains are probably gonna get blown out. Yeah, I can't ask God. I can't. It doesn't work that way. You understand what I'm saying? Like I yeah. can't simultaneously pray for God to protect me, but then put a gun in my mouth and pull the trigger. Like now you just you being ridiculous. Like you know yeah. what I mean? Don't, and it's, the yeah. same, it's the same thing. Like yo, they say Kobe went to church that morning. He was prayed up. He had faith, but that pilot made a decision. There was some human error involved. Couldn't yeah. see. Ran into a mountain doing 186 miles per hour. God didn't make these indestructible, baby. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he didn't make these bodies indestructible is all I'm saying. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. And we wouldn't want them to be. No, I would.
I don't think you would because I don't think you would value life. We value life. What happens in these moments? They teach us the value of life. When we see someone that we care about die or when we see someone we care about not only die but lose their family members, we hug our family members, right? These are constant reminders on a universal scale of how valuable life is and how not, uh, what's it called, promised it is. And how quick it can go. Say what? How quick it can go. It's a 41-year-old man. I'm 41. I'm born in 1978. You done did all of this life. You played 20 years of basketball. You got all of these championships, everything, and your life is literally gone in, what, 15 minutes, whatever long it took for them to be in that plane? Like, I mean, helicopter? Like, Jesus Christ. Mm. Hey, man. Mm. What about the logo? The mm. logo? What logo? Did they change it? Oh, I love this idea. So they said they were considering, or there was a million petitions it's not gonna happen. signed. I don't know if it happens, but it would be really interesting. They, gotta pay, they would have to pay the family. Say what? They'd have to pay the family. Pay what family? They'd have to pay the Bryants. That's Kobe's likeness. You know the NBA has never acknowledged that's Jerry West's likeness? Is that right? Yes, because they'd have to pay the fuck out of Jerry West. You know <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you know what? I bet you the Bryants would sign it off. And I bet you Vanessa Bryant would sign it off because in a weird way, Kobe was always in the shadow of Michael Jordan, right? He never maybe, he never was as great as Michael Jordan in many people's eyes, but he did something that Michael couldn't do, which was transition to life without basketball. Way better than Jordan did. You think? Yeah, 100%. Jordan became an owner and the, uh, the owner of Jordan. He became, uh, not only the owner of the Hornets, Jordan brand. Jordan lives a great life. No, no, he's successful financially, but if you look at him, he doesn't look great. you just judging that off his genes. I'm yeah. <laughs> like, that's the only reason. By the way, give Kobe a few. If you'd have gave Kobe about nine more years, we don't know what Kobe would have looked like at 50. By bro. all reports, Jordan is not like the happiest of guys, you know, and that was during his playing career and it continued to afterwards. I mean, every time you see Jordan in a, in an interview, he's drinking, right? I've yet to see him in an interview where he doesn't have like a glass of scotch or tequila he's or something. He's fucking retired. Wait till you see me when I'm retired, guys. You're going to be drinking a lot? <laughs> Who are you going to think? I'm going to fucking like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be doing good. I'll say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yo, fucked up. He's drinking all the time. He's retired. You never see someone drinking all the time and be like, oh, they're happy. Man, that man spent, yo, he spent decades literally giving his life to basketball. Well, now he used to drink when he played sports too, so... It's a story of him drinking whole 18 packs of beer and then going to fucking score 50 points. Yeah, he's not happy. Maybe he's just an alcoholic. Maybe he likes to Yeah, <laughs> and that's not good, <laughs> right? Like, who's a positive, happy person I, yeah, that's also like, happy, an alcoholic? Yeah, I don't like to judge whether people are happy or not. I don't know. I, look, I don't... His yeah. genes do look sad, if that's what you want me to say. His genes, look, it is what it is. Yes. I just, I forgot why I even brought it up, to be honest with you. What was I saying? You're talking about the logo. Oh, the logo. <laughs> It would be int- it would be an interesting one up on Michael Jordan, posthumously. All of a sudden, he becomes synonymous with basketball from now for forever, and he gets that thing that he always wanted to be the most to be the most incredible a basketball player in history. Like history I don't think can I, be fair. I, I would. I, I you're immortalized. I don't know if that's what Kobe. Wa- I mean, listen, I don't. I can't speak for Kobe. I don't think that's what Kobe wanted at 41 years old. No, at 41, it changed. He was like, it's the legacy and how how you affect people and your kids, yeah. man. Like, and I don't. There's no, I, I refuse to believe that if Kobe Bryant had the opportunity, this is how he would want to be immortalized. Yeah. Well, you got to lose seven people that are close to you, one being your, or eight people that are close to you, one being your 13 year old daughter. Yeah. And your life. Nah. Yeah. It ain't worth it. It ain't, by the way, it ain't worth it. Everything we're chasing, all that professional stuff we're chasing, mm-hmm. the, the 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 rings for whatever we do, whether it's radio, comedy, whatever, whatever, yeah. none of it's worth it. Yeah. At the end of the day, what's worth it is that family you got at home. You know yeah. what I'm saying? What if you don't have a family at home? Take your condom off. Start doing it. That's it. Now what 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 if I don't wear them? Then you might want to go get checked and see what's wrong with your, your little skeet skeeter. You know what I'm saying? Bro, <laughs> you might on, not dog. have that super sperm. Bro, come you on, might not dog. be po- You never had no scares, bro. I'm pulling out had no scares. Wash, bro. You never had no scares? <laughs> Say what? You never had no scares? I'm always scared. You never <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? ain't got no scares. Listen, you never made a girl miss her period? We mean, Even if she didn't get miss. pregnant, she just thought, like, I don't know, it's a little late. Some, it's always late. Girls never know when their period is. Really? Gosh. Once a month, my girl. What, 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 I you don't pay for my no abortions in here. Say what? You never pay for no abortions? Yo, Bernie Sanders got to handle abortions from now on, bro. <laughs> if you're going to handle Medicare, bro, Bernie, you got <laughs> health care for all. That's the platform. Rest in peace to Kobe Bryant. Nah, Condolences to his family. I never really? Yeah, yeah. Or I never had him, <laughs> to my <laughs> knowledge. 
I mean, Charlamagne out here keeping Planned Parenthood alive. I'm just y'all telling, got a plaque. I'm just telling you how good they my sperm works. They jersey from the fucking I'm Raptors just telling you how good my sperm work, baby. I got three and three possibles. All right? <laughs> All right. Okay. You got a half court basketball game hey, just man. in heaven waiting for you. I, I got three exactly. I got three hands, three waiting on pops. You wanted that boy? We all up here. All right. All right. I'm just saying. Let's pay, Yo, <laughs> let's pay these bills. That's hilarious. Let's pay these. Let's pay these bills, and then we're gonna have our guests come in the building. Yes. Uh, go ahead, Shoti. All right, guys. Um. Today's episode brought to you by Postmates. Other than your absolute best friends, who could you ask to bring you red wine at 4 p.m., sushi at 9 p.m., and a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m.? Nobody except Postmates. Now, if you guys don't know what Postmates are, I don't know how you have a cell phone, or I don't know how you're listening to this podcast. It's clear that you're not living in 2020 like the rest of us. This is how you get your stuff delivered to you. Food, sushi, alcohol, Whatever the hell you want, get it delivered directly to you, all right? No more trips to the store. You don't have to know where the store is. Postmates will do anything you need. Download the app, iOS or Android for free. Browse local restaurants and businesses and track your delivery. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. That's how many days there are in the year, and that's how many hours there are in the day that you can use this and order. Simple as that. Anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the known universe with more than 25,000 partner merchants. For a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. To start your free deliveries, download the app right now and use the code IDIOTS. That's IDIOTS. IDIOTS for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Get anything you need, anytime you need it. Download Postmates Save with the code IDIOTS, you get that $100 of free delivery credit. Now, let's get back to the show. We have a guest I'm very excited to talk to, man, because uh, he's not aware of this, but he has been very responsible for um, a lot of the success I've had in my career. Uh, My whole idea with posting clips on the internet and posting weekly content and stand-up comedy comes from the way that he operated with uh, the music industry. So this is really exciting that we get to sit down. A massive inspiration, um, an incredibly successful young gentleman who has a lot of very interesting things to say about his business, but also about life and, and legacy. So it's it's great that we get to sit down with Russ, everybody. Charlamagne the God here. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and we got a special guest in the building, man. He's got a, a new album dropping. Today's Thursday. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, Today, right? midnight. Technically, yeah, tomorrow, but yeah, midnight. You know that voice. Russ yeah. is here. Yes. What's happening, Russ? Can't complain, living the dream. Now, I'm glad that you're here because Andrew Schultz, um, did you tell him already? I'm sure you did. Of course. Yeah, we've been talking. I couldn't wait. Okay. Well, let's, let's act like that conversation never happened. Hand me those. I basically, I basically have been, um, I, I owe a lot of my success to, to you and I was telling you this before and um, yeah, you really inspired me to put Thank out the you. content and it's, and it's weird how it happens because I get a lot of credit in the comedy world, uh, you know, like taking comedy from TV to the internet. And I always say, I just took it for musicians. Yeah. Whatever musicians were doing, they're 20 years ahead of comics. Right. right? And Interesting. You specifically with releasing a song, I thought you did it for a year. Yeah, I know you did no, it for was, two years. Yeah, like two and a half. It was a long time. You did not- a song a week. Yeah. So I did a song a week. Uh, roughly for like two and a half years on SoundCloud. Yeah. Yeah. And this is before, like, you know, the reason why I was doing it on SoundCloud was because that was the platform. They're like, right. you gotta understand, this is before Apple Music was even out. Right. And it was when Spotify was still new. Like, Rap Caviar was not a thing. I remember mm-hmm. having uh, my first song that really went big was like, What They Want. Yeah. It was in Rap Caviar and... I didn't know. No one knew around me. No one like no one cared just because like what was that at the time? So it was really just about SoundCloud because it was the quickest way to get just direct to consumer and right. people just I just want people to hear my song. So I was doing yeah a song a week and I ended up doing ninety six songs. What SoundCloud. got your attention about Russ though? Because I mean that's not it's, someone artists told me. do that. But well, what so, about Russ specifically? I don't know if artists do that. Artists don't do that. They don't. They don't put out songs all the time. Every week, not a week. Not every no week. one's ever done that for ninety six so weeks like in a row. It was like a mixtape nah. model, like yeah, yo, yeah, we'll yeah, play yeah, a mixtape yeah. and maybe an album or something like that. But what someone told me that you were doing it once a week, and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, that's hard work. I, I hate. I I will never complain if I'm working harder than everyone. Yeah. Fuck complaining, even in general. But I was like, okay, I'm not working hard enough. Yeah. So okay. and I was like, okay, boom. If I put this out once a week. Mm-hmm. 
I'll be good. At least I know I'm doing something to further my career. Yeah. And then once I started having all the things out, I remember when something hit. Do you remember when your first joint hit? I remember, like, you know what, for me, because when you're putting out so much content, it's yeah. all this kind of, like, gradual accumulation of uh Oh, so it wasn't spikes. one song. No, it wasn't like you wake up and it's, oh, my God, it's going crazy. It's just that this song hits 10,000 plays mm -hmm. and this one hits 12,000 and 15. And before you know it, it just compounds. But that's why putting out so much content is great because it all ends up compounding. Yeah. You know, so because... My song I put out this week will get promoted by the song I put out next week, and so, so on and so forth. So that's the thing. What that, are you doing? I think you got a girlfriend, right? Taylor. Relax. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! So What's up annoying. with you, man? What's up? What's up? Um, <laughs> Thank you. So you never seen you do that for anybody. Am I still? Am I still being heard? <laughs> yeah, you, you still don't want to give me your grapefruit juice? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, is that a new slang for something? <laughs> It could be. <laughs> this is a Me Too era. You got to push it up a little bit. She's you know literally mean? drinking great for just for those who can't see. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So, so basically, I looked at it, and, and for me, it wasn't like really that gradual thing. I think yeah. what happened for me was I had one clip go viral. It was on Super Bowl Sunday, like a few mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And but this is what happened that was interesting. It went viral, but I had all these other clips out there, which is why. I that's but see that's the key that's why I tell people like you don't catalog. want you don't, people it's catalog go, people they go have to go for back one to moment something. but it's like if you have yeah. tons of work out there and then one hits it becomes the champagne glass at the top of the tower you know you just pouring that one and yeah. it starts spilling out yeah so this one thing hit and then everybody started checking the other stuff and then the algorithm got hit and it was yeah. like yeah and it goes oh, from okay. I like this song to now yeah, I like, I like this guy and well, that's the key and bro and that's yeah. the key that's, and that's what we learned and literally I credit this to you I say this on any podcast podcast that they asked wow. me about but is um but i was like i basically look at it like this and i start to look at like funnels right and i was yeah. like okay how do we find someone on the internet like how do you find a musician you don't listen to a whole album that's no, stupid it's insane you put out a single and i'm like why are comedians who are strangers to most people putting out an hour of saying sit down take yeah. an hour of your content to listen to a stranger right. i would never listen to any stranger for an hour it's insane. i don't care how funny they are <laughs> a stranger yeah so i'm like i'm a stranger I'm even nobody. if it was recommended even if it was recommended, an I'm hour, a nobody. No chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm you a better nobody. tell me one funny joke right now. So I'm gonna give you one funny. I'm gonna give you singles. Boom, right? That's what I it hit is. you a single, hit you a single, and then I put out the longer project. And that's what we did. And and shit just exploded. And then other that's comics amazing. started getting on it, man. So yeah, man. That's you beautiful. you have influenced Thank you. the comedy world. I swear that's to God, crazy. If, you, if you look at your phone right now, you look at your explore page, you will see comics posting <laughs> clips on Instagram. That did not happen. Before you did that's the crazy. week of music, what is that's that a song amazing. every week? That's, yeah, I'm, wow. That's the amazing. ecosystem is affected, man. Yeah, for real. That's beautiful. But I think it's like, I think that every artist should implement a more consistent, simplified method of content. Yes, because like he's saying, content consumption or just content uh, production approach. Okay, because it's like yeah. that's why I did this thing was for the same reason. No one's trying to hear an album from someone they don't know. So I was like, I just need to get y'all's attention. I know y'all can listen to one song. So I'll do a song a week, same type of thing. And then when you have the catalog, whatever that one song is that makes the pop boil over, mm. when you then go on the internet and type in, let me see if there's anything else, and you find 200 songs, you're like, oh, you were prepared for this moment. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a hardcore fan. You can't be a hardcore fan of someone that has two things. Two songs. Yeah. Bro, we, were, yeah. we were talking about this. It's like... If you're smart about it, you and sometimes it happens organically, you have like a funnel to being a super fan, right? And let's say, for example, they listen to what they want, right? Right. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, he's kind of nice. And they listen to another one. And then a third song, they're like, I fuck with him. Right. I'm a fan. Right. So my my whole strategy was three then imagine piece. 30 songs deep. Now 40. forget it. It's over. Now it's, I'm getting the tattoo. Now it's, <laughs> <laughs> not only, I get the tattoo, you know I, mean? I gotta go to the show. I gotta go to the show. I, I gotta buy the merch. I my life. And that's what it is. It's like, is my merch, not, now I think everything I do is better than everyone just because it's like, I have to think like that. That's how you have to move. But and that's why people don't like you, but that's the mentality sure. you're supposed to you're have. You're supposed to have. But the it, fuck is wrong with you? Is my no, merch you technically there and be like, Yo, well, better well. than this? <laughs> is my show technically better than this? Is the song better? It's all subjective. But what I what it is, is that I have people bought into me. There's a lot of artists out here who have people bought into their songs. But like, I have people bought into me to the point that yeah, you know what? All you're doing is selling a fucking hoodie, but bro, I'm buying it because I like you. Yeah. My boy Mark said this shit to us. We're on the road and he goes, um, cause we were talking about the importance of like the person in front of the brand. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, you go to any WWE show, the wrestling shit, 
they sell John Cena's outfit after the show. That is the worst outfit. (laughs) It's literally jean shorts and a t-shirt. That's amazing. And they sell it so you could yeah. dress like John Cena. That has nothing to do with how cool the clothing is. No. It has to do with the person. Yeah, it's all it's because how cool he is, the perception. Boom. Yeah. That's what you know. It's like you shake the shake the snow globe. That's the new album that's coming yes. out. Yes. The, the way I got on the rust is because it was the hate campaign people had against you. Yeah. And I'm always drawing to people like that. I need to know why somebody right. is hated so what much. Sure. So I go and I check it out. I'm like, well, what the fuck? He can rap his ass off. Thank you. So why don't people like him? Yeah. You know? And then I started seeing videos of you getting people fucked up. And I appreciated that too. <laughs> no, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I appreciated that too. So even I'm like, I think I fuck with this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't, yeah. never never heard you have a conversation, nothing. I just saw that. Sure. And then even when I saw the things you were saying about people in drug use, I'm like, how can somebody be mad yeah. at what he's saying in regards to artists using drugs? I understand it though. Why? I, I'll tell you what it is. It's, um, it's, and I forgive, I was talking with someone yesterday. Um, I forgive myself and I forgive people who have an issue because I also understand the perspective of when you see a rookie come into the league in the NFL or the NBA and they have a good rookie season, you're like, who cares? Do yep. it again next year. Mm-hmm. And when you're a rookie talking crazy, mm. like imagine if like John Moran right now was just in every post game interview, like, I'm going to be best. better than that. And I'm the best player in the league. It's like, yo, I feel you in the numbers back it, but like, hold on a little second, like do it again. So I understand that you're talking a lot too early. I get that perspective. I don't think I am, but I understand if you feel like that. And so I realize that in order to combat that, the only way to solve that is for me to be this dope for a long time. Mm. Like it's longevity. It's, it's yeah. at the end of the day, like, you're only a legend if you do it for a long time. Like Drake has been so ill for so long. You have to give it's it up. Cole, Kendrick, yeah. even Nikki, whatever you want to say about Nikki, it's like, yeah, but she was and is really successful for mad long. Like people yeah. can't last a summer out here. It's mm-hmm. a decade. You know? yeah. So I just know that I get it. If y'all don't want to give me the credit right now, that's cool. But check back in five years when it's like, yo, Russ has been here for 10 years, been saying the same shit, still putting up numbers, doing arenas, da 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 Now he's got this singer pregnant. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but the ill thing about that is, the ill thing about that is, they gonna all, all they're going to do is go back and give you your props for saying it from the I know, beginning. I it's know. Like, it's that, like the same well, thing with Kobe now. It's well, like, he, they thought he was arrogant back then, but now it's like, yo, he was telling us he was going to be that guy. Like, you know the resolution for that is fans. Fans are the ones who just tell the world from day one, no, Charlemagne is great. Mm. Schultz is great. Russ is great. And that's what you bank on. That's what you feed. You pay attention to those people mm-hmm. and you let the rest of the people catch on when they catch on. Mm. And, that, and, and that's what it is. And, it, and I've like, I and used, let them convert. I used to fight it a lot. And I still, a lot of times I fight like trying to prove yourself like, no, nah, I am great. I'm better. Like, look at my numbers. I'm better than him. I'm better than, but it's like, man, people are just going to catch on when they catch on. Yeah. And that's just what it is. And like, you can spend so much time and waste so much energy and almost be ungrateful because you're so focused on who doesn't fuck with you and trying to get them to fuck with Absolutely. you waste that you time. forget that all these people, all these people fuck, fuck with, with you. you. Waste Why don't you time. just fuck with them and maybe, you know what, the five people in their friend group who didn't like you, maybe they'll now like you in a mm. year from now, whatever. Like, just focus on this. So. so why can't you ignore people when it comes to, like, punching people? Like, I'll, tell you, I'll, well, I'll, t- I'll tell you why. Because Cause I like punching people. <laughs> no, because I'm never, I'm never, I, I'll say this. I'm really never even trying to operate from that frequency. I'm really not. But I will say, I take it offensive because if you're Joe Schmo from middle of nowhere and you have 10 followers and you say Russ is an L or whatever the hell, it, it doesn't matter because you're not influencing anyone. Yeah. So it's not offensive because you have no pull. Now, if you as a stranger and a grown ass man who I've never met, never talked to, we're not cool, we don't have any, we have no issue, and you decide to round up your army of fans, whether or not you realize that's what you're doing, but if you decide to round up your army of fans to influence them to have a negative opinion of another grown ass man who's just trying to be successful and do his thing, I take it as offensive as it is. Right. Because you're crossing the line now. You're you're, you're now the you're, you're now trying to like because you don't understand that. By you getting your army of fans to feel some type of way about me, and you influence them because you got to understand when we have fans, you could tell them jump off a cliff and they might jump off the cliff. Right. So if you say, nah, we all don't like Russ now, I take it offensive because you saying that might fuck up 
my streams because maybe more people are going to be peer pressured to be like, nah, I'm not listening to Russ, which means you fuck up my family's money. Mm -hmm. You fuck up a lot of things. So I take it as offensive as it is. So especially because we're not cool like that. We don't mm -hmm. know each other. So if we do see each other, you should know what time it is. Mm -hmm. And if you like, I, I'm also just, I don't understand this. If you talk shit about somebody and you end up getting punched in the mouth, what is the confusion? Yeah. What's the confusion? <laughs> <laughs> That's a wild shit to say to somebody after you punch them in the face. And like, what is the confusion? I don't like, <laughs> bro, every time it's happened, it's like, I can't believe. <laughs> it's like, where y'all from? Where y'all from? They turn into the victim. But it's like, yeah. it's, if you break it down like that, like, yeah, I mean, Russ never said anything to me ever. I talked shit about him, and then I got punched in the face. Yeah. I can't believe it. They, they, thought, it's you, like, they thought you was going to give them the same energy they no, gave you. No, what it is. They thought you would come on the internet, no, it's just tweet. No, it's just disrespect is what it is. It's yeah. that you're not you're not saying that to 21 Savage. You're not saying that to Gucci. Oh, they you're thought not, they could get uh, away with it. You think it's just point. sweet. Yeah. Point. You are not. Good however point. you feel about Gucci or Kevin Gates or 21 or people not that happening. you think are going to come see you about it, Good point. you're not even going to tweet it. You're tweeting it because you think there is no repercussions for your actions. So it's like, cool, I'm here to let you know that there is. And so if you guys want to keep doing it, you're going to keep getting punched in the mouth. Is yeah. that why you wear your head down? Do you have like cauliflower on your ear? Like you secretly an he's MMA fighter or something? MMA fighter. <laughs> so he got to hide it from people? <laughs> no, so my, brother, to... my brother's a real deal. <laughs> he does MMA? Yeah, he does jujitsu and the whole nine. Wow. Yeah. What's, the, what's, the, what's the Shake the Snow Globe? What does that mean? Title, um, title so down. Shake the Snow Globe was about resetting and reflecting because I got very stagnant and jaded to the pros and the cons. I got jaded to having money yeah. and walking around my house. Like this is regular that I have my logo in my pool and I have a multi-million dollar fucking thing going on. And yeah. my studio in my house is crazy. I got a gym, I got a sauna, I got a, my mom, I bought her a house, all these beautiful pros and I'm touring around the world. I got fans. I got everything I ever wanted. Um, and then the cons, like, you know, I got too caught up in that, the negativity, and then my family's personal life going on. And I realized that I got so stuck like energy wise and so stagnant that I was like man I was walking around my house one night by myself and you know I live like I live by myself in this 12,000 square foot house just in the cut uh you know the north side of Atlanta just tucked away and I was walking around my house one day and I'm just like man I look around and I'm looking at like my pool table with my logo and like just all these <laughs> I don't know when you have a house you start really realizing like Man, like, nah, my rap paid for these curtains. Like, yeah. the, the curtains. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the glass, the plates. You yeah. feel me? Like, it starts really settling in, and I never had stability like that. Um, Does it fuck with you? Because I know for me, man, I, I be feeling, I, I run through stages, right? Like, I have, like, guilt. Sure. Because I feel like, yo, damn, it's people, you know, that came up with me that don't have this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I start having, like, survivor's remorse. Like, you know what I mean? Survivor's guilt, yeah. yeah. And I start thinking about my mom making $30,000 a year. And it fucks with me, but then I also just feel like the chosen one. I really do. I just right, feel right, like, right. you know what? It's been bestowed upon me yeah. to do this. So that's what it is. But so I was walking around my house and I was looking around just not just at the physical house, but then my life mentally. And I'm like, and I said to myself organically, just like, if not now, then when? Right. And that was the statement that changed like my life. Cause I was like, man, at the time I was 26. I'm 27 now. By the time I was 26, I'm like 26. I got all these things. I got everything I ever asked for. If I'm not happy now, then like, then I should just give this up. You weren't happy? No, like Maybe I, you didn't I feel worthy. I thought I wasn't happy or something mm -hmm. like because I yeah, yeah. wasn't focused on what mattered. You know, yeah, yeah. I was so you were outside in, not inside out. Exactly. Yeah, I was yeah. so uh, focused on like the next thing or the what can I do better. Like, bro, take a second. Like you you're walking around your fucking house. Yeah, 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 enjoy the moment. Yeah. So I was like, if not now, when? Like, I don't want to be thirty five and look back and be like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. That was so lit back then. And I didn't enjoy that. Like, I'm tripping. So it's a scary thing. I would is. imagine to achieve all of your dreams and then be sitting there like, wait a minute, why am I not as right. happy as I thought? Because I it's would a be. personal, it's a personal problem. Yeah. It's a personal problem. And 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 that's something that I've been working on. But I realized it that night, which is why then I called it Shake the Snow Globe. Because when you look at a snow globe and it's just all stagnant and still, and you look at it for too long, it's just still. And then you got to just shake it up, you know, yeah. and just reset and let it all fall back into place. Because the dust had settled yeah, yeah, for yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. too long. So I was just like, nah, man, I got to like shake it off. I got like the Tin Man, but like I haven't yeah. been, you know. You need the oil. And yeah. I, I be feeling like that too sometimes because it's like, yo, if you don't, 
It almost feels like if you don't appreciate what you have, God will take it from you. That's what I started getting scared about too. Yeah. Like I started catching myself mentally and it's still like an ongoing battle, but at least I'm aware now. But I started getting like that too. Like, <clears throat> oh shit, like, please don't think that I don't want this, yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah, because yeah. I want this. I like it. I'm just trying to work on it, but like, don't go anywhere. Is that, was that what the book was about? It's all in your head? Get out yeah, of your well, way? what's funny about that is like, I need to read that. <laughs> yeah. I need that book more than a lot right. of people. Um, I have all the game because of what I've applied to my life and I could put it in a book. Um, but I almost got so good at preaching what to do and I stopped practicing it. Mm. So that's what I've been trying to work on now. But that's what the album is. What was it? Was it like therapy? Was this like, was this you going to therapy? Were you? I know. I never, okay. I call, I call the studio my therapy sessions mm -hmm. because I feel like um, when I'm, down the, now, this is the first time that I've had a studio in my house. Like, that's the other thing with this album. This whole album was recorded in my basement by myself, you know. Um, Don't talk like you got an ordinary basement, sir. No, I'm but... sure you got a full deck studio down there. No, I do. But oh. that's why, like, that's what's amazing about it, is that I get to go down there and just lock in and, and zone out. So this whole thing, like, you know, the other two albums, I'm recording on the road in this hotel room, in this hotel room, uh. random... And it's chaotic. This was the first time I had stability, even from a creative place. So I got to really explore my own creative potential and reservoir. Um, and that was therapy for me because I got to really just be super vulnerable, you know? And um, it, it was really important for me. And writing that book was important because putting it down on paper and writing it made me feel like, yeah, you know what? Okay, I forgot that I even feel like this. Like, because it was all coming out so easy. Like, all, yeah. the, all the chapters in the book, they were so mm -hmm. easy to write. That you would think that I follow them religiously, mm -hmm. but I was like, nah, man, I'm bugging because like it can't be this easy for me to say, but I'm I'm slipping up on following what I'm even trying to preach to y'all. Yeah, I saw the, the the handwritten letter you wrote. Yeah, and you talked about not being proud of the headspace you were in. Yeah, in, in 2018. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like, what exactly weren't you proud of? I wasn't proud that I was um, that I that I was operating at a lower frequency than I wanted to. It was. I was too caught up in the negativity. But it's hard. Like, it's hard to, like, there's no rubric for it. Like, you got to understand. Uh, the negativity is the criticism. The negative, the media negativity, yeah. because at the end of the day, like, there's no way to prepare for it. So naturally, like, when you're going through it, you think that, man, if all this hate is online, I'm seeing all this shit, like, I'm thinking I'm about to go to my next show and get rocks thrown at me. <laughs> you know, or like whatever. Like you just like, I remember going to do Coachella and being super concerned. Like people really hate me. Cause like, yeah, because like it wasn't yeah. my show. It was a festival. <clears throat> so I'm like, I'm going to Coachella and I'm like, man, yeah, I'm just hoping that this go. I'm hoping that this goes yeah. okay. It was the most insane show ever. Yeah, because what happens and Cause I, it doesn't because it's not real. Then not I real learned life, it's no. not real it's hate. Not. But it's too hate ways. is real life. This shit hate, is just the clicks hate might be and fake. Likes. The hate might be fake or it might be on the internet, but it multiplies the love. It's uh. like, it's the same shit that happens with Trump, to be honest. It's like, the more people trash Trump, yeah. the more his supporters want to go hard. They're like, yeah. oh no, we're wearing a mm -hmm. hat. We're yeah. doing it all. Right. We're, letting, we're putting the bumper we're stickers down. on. Yeah. yeah. So, of course, the show is going to be that much better because they're there like, nah, that's our guy. But that's why I always give it up to the fans because they could easily, and I know I've lost fans to peer pressure. Like, you know, if I got a 16-year-old fan, it's really easy to be like, well, all my friends said that you suck, so I can't yeah. keep it. But then they're not the real friend. ones. Yeah. No, they're not. But at the same time, the ones who stick around, to Those be a 17-year-old, 18-year-old, whatever, and your friends say, yo, he's whack, I'm not going to the show with you, <sighs> and you still pull up and you still go hard, like, it's just so real to me. So, yeah, I just wasn't proud of sinking into the negativity, and I wasn't proud that I wasn't taking care of myself hmm. as far as, like, I got burnt out. I got very burnt out as far as like, I didn't have, I bought my house December, 2017, all 2018. I was on the road and it was getting worked on. I didn't sleep in my house till January, 2019. So I was just running around. Like mm. I was just on go and I had no stability. There was no routine. It was just, you know, you're getting tugged this way and tugged that way. And before you know, your center is all off balance yeah, 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 yeah. and you just feel burnt out. <clears throat> and you feel like a fucking mess and you feel like, you know what? Fuck all y'all. Well, you got nothing else I'm to give. I'm about to sit in my house for six months, which is what I did in 2019. I didn't do anything for the first half of the year. Because yeah. I was like, nah, you know what? I'm going to take some time for me. 
Yeah. And actually enjoy my life, enjoy my pool, have girls over, record in my studio, did it like enjoy my life. Like, maybe you need a family, man. Stop wearing condoms. Like maybe you need to see now I'm, this I'm is, dead serious. I, so am I. Maybe now, you this need is a, a family. this is a real conversation yes. that I've had. You maybe this you is need a real a like I used seven months ago I was I'm not having kids, so I'm 35. Then I had a conversation with a girl and I had a conversation with Swiss Beats. Uh, where it was like life doesn't start until you start a life. Absolutely. Because you talk about having a center. Like I know for me, my mm. stability, my center is my family. Like you say you're coming home, but you know, you're coming to a house. Yeah. It's and it's an home. empty house. Yeah, it's not mm. a home. It's a yet. hotel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. not a home until you got a, a queen and you got yeah. a, a, a child. Like it'll yeah. give you a real purpose. Yeah. No, I agree. That That's a real thought that I've had because I've also been like, man, the only thing left for, for me to do is everything I've already done. Like, mm. everything I wanted to do, I've already done. The only thing left is to get a Grammy. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, I have... You really want one of those give a yeah. fuck? I, you strike me as a person yeah, that would not give cares? a fuck about well, that kind of well, validation. Well, because I want to prove to myself that I was right when I was fucking 15. You already but you did! Are right. you no, sell about that arenas. too. No, I know, about that too, though. Oh, you mean that was something you had on your that vision board? That was always something I had okay, on my okay, thing, okay. so I just, gotcha. I want but one and then I'm fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's fake. I, I, yeah, trust it's me, I, I know, it's but it's like... It's just to reinforce the people that they want to win. I want it, I want it. I want it because my ego. I want it. <laughs> That's real. But why does it define you? It doesn't. My, it's like my your ego name on needs the it. Pool table. No, Who it's gives my a ego. Fuck? You know what? That's what's crazy. Ego. Listen, That's I, what's crazy. It's, it's literally. It's it's my ego needs it and then be gone, die. <laughs> you feel yeah. me? Like so, you want to get it and then do the whole Jay Z. It's uh, almost like I have cup. one debt left to pay to my ego, and it's to get a grand. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think, and then you're gonna be like, I need something else though. That's real though. Yeah, I, I owe my ego that. He's like, yo, listen, you still owe me. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question. Do you think that the hate comes from people resisting change? I just think at the end of the day, bro, I'm I'm in hip hop. I'm a white guy and I'm talking a whole lot Are of shit. Are you white? I didn't know you was white, bro. Yeah, well, I'm I found Sicilian. out you were white the Sicilian. end of 2019. Sicilian. That's yeah. what I, yeah. You're the blackest white. I agree. Well, Sicilian. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Sicilians, Italians, Italians uh, yeah, are off-white, white, white, though. But this is the off-white of off-white. Italians don't like to be called white. Bro, but the Sicilians, they got a little black in them. Well, if you go back to the Moors and... The Moors were out there, yeah. <clears throat> not asking okay. permission. Yeah. That's a real, like, that's... When you do the ancestry on it, it's like the Moors came to Sicily... Took over. That's why Italians went from blonde hair, blue eyes to dark hair, dark mm -hmm. eyes. But the perception, I get what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, but white guy, long hair. Like, yeah. And the, yeah, and that's what it is. And so I understand. It's like, yo, like let's just call it what it is. Culture is a euphemism for black. Urban is a euphemism for black. So when you have a white guy coming into the culture, a black space, trying to speak on black things, mm -hmm. it's like, bro, shut up. You might be right, but we don't want to hear it from you, which I absolutely understand and I get. So that's mm -hmm. why no, I've seen I'm not you tripping. I've seen you post posts that I've commented on like, yeah, I'm glad Russ said yeah. that. I can't remember the exact post what it was. It was something about Everybody should say the N-word or something? No, shut up. It's about Jesus white artists. <laughs> yeah, Nigeria. That's the word. Yeah, white, artists, white artists and culture. It was something. I can't remember exactly what it was. Mm. Everybody gave you props for that, though. Probably about how I was talking about um, just label owners are these white guys Boom. who... That's what it was. ...who sign black kids that they wouldn't even want their kids hanging out exactly. with. But they just do it to make the money. Um, which is true. And that's why it's like, you know, white people historically steal from black culture. Right. That's a fact. So America was founded off of terrorism and thief. <laughs> like so, so, it's like, so it's like old. I mean, that's, that's all cultures, right? I don't think there's any culture that was Well, just no, like, but you got to like, you got to look, look at, at the Roman Empire, right? They didn't do that. But like, you got to look at kindly. like even, you got to look at even how, what the 2020 white girl wants to look like. Yeah, yeah, She yeah, wants to look yeah, cool. Yeah. No, she wants to look black. Well, black's that's defined what, cool. Th that's yeah. that's what I'm we're saying. attracted to cool. Like no, but like the problem is that the yeah. same thing that black women will get uh, hindered from, which are just natural, beautiful black features, it won't be is accepted. A, is the same it. thing yeah. white people will use to sprinkle onto their whiteness to just look right. cooler. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent. I that's guess. The problem. I guess what I, I think it, it we get lost in the. Uh, in the idea that black people are a monolith, right? Because not all black people are going to dress the same or look the same, et cetera. No. But cool is cool regardless, right? So like sure. if you go to Korea, you're going to see a bunch of Korean kids. Dressing like black kids. Dressing black kids, doing fucking, what is it, yeah. break dancing? Sure. You know what I mean? Got cornrows. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, that's the cool culture. That's what we're Which, drawn to. 
I think you know I mean? think now I'm probably speaking a little bit out of turn, but I don't think black people have a problem <coughs> with y'all doing that. I think it's more about they have a problem with if y'all are doing that and being accepted, then why when we do that, we get chastised for that. I think that's part of it. You also, know? um, not wanting people to revise history. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, this was the genesis of this culture. This was the genesis of this music. It was rooted in blackness. And a lot of times we all know they like to rewrite history. And that's what it is. And that's why it's like, I understand that, you know, and that when I said like historically white people steal from black culture, like when you look at hip hop, hip hop was, you know, for us bias. It was black created and black right. owned and mm -hmm. it was created for black people. And so when you have somebody white coming into it, right. it's kind of like, here we go again. You know, and so I understand that it's delicate and it's and and until and if you're white in hip hop, you have to contribute to uh, black culture in some sort of fashion. Otherwise, you are simply repeating history by coming in to black culture, using that as a medium to steal and profit for self. Yeah, I think it's like anything else. You just got to you got to point where the originators point where your inspiration came from, like your yeah. inspiration came from. This black artist, that black artist. Right. That's it's just to me. It's just like by paying homage, to be honest. No, that's cool. But you also, I think it's also about the music. You can't come into this from the vessel of hip hop and use the clothes and the language and the music, and then go off and start doing something. It's white. weird. To Are you talking about Post Malone? Uh, no. I mean, I think it sounds very posty. No, nah, but I think that's like I think that's a fair example because I do think that that's. It's an interesting thing to look at from that lens of where, you know, you come in with braids and golds to the point people are thinking you're mixed. And now, you know, you drink Bud Light and wear cowboy boots and stuff, <laughs> which is like, cool. like your music's phenomenal. I think Post Malone's music is phenomenal, but I think, I think the caricature of how it came in compared to where it is oh, now yeah, seems I mean, a little, seems a little, it's a little interesting. It was White Iverson. It was White again. Yeah, it's just you know it, what I'm saying. White yeah. Iverson was his first song. Yeah, like, it's just but he it's got just out of there. But he but he but makes smart. The for thing him is, out of there. the thing is, he he makes great music. You know, yeah. he makes great music and he's super talented. But yeah, I just think certain things like that. You know, those are fair critiques as far as like, yo, it feels like you came in and used hip hop because it's the coolest genre and the coolest look and aesthetic. You used it to propel yourself to the forefront, and then you reverted back to who you really were. You know, which I and, and shit on hip hop in the process. Yeah, you know? so I, I think that's a fair critique, but um, I, th that's why I feel like for me, I just think it's going to be time and as far as like, man, Russ has been putting out quality hip hop. Like, I feel like I do hip hop justice. I don't, um, I don't make a mockery of it. I don't portray any negative stereotypes. I don't feed into it. Like, I could go and put post myself in the Gucci store spending 30K mm. because even though Gucci's racist, I'm white, they're not racist to me, so I could do it. But at the same time, if I'm in hip hop culture, which is black culture and Gucci's being racist, I can't be in the Gucci store blowing so you 30K. Feel responsibility I do, to the black because culture, yeah. otherwise it's just like, oh, so you get to eat off of hip hop culture, but when someone is being disrespectful towards it, you're like, no, that they're not being disrespectful towards me, I'm white. Yeah, so even when you see other black artists still wearing Gucci and stuff, you'll still say, nope, I'm not going to do it. I can't, yeah, because yeah, yeah. then it just looks like, mm. it looks like it's all pros and no cons for you, you know? So I just think you got to just be aware of what's going on. I just feel like I do hip hop justice by speaking uh, about the ownership of what needs to happen, because I also think that the solution to young, um, disadvantaged uh, black kids getting taken advantage of mm. by white label owners. Lack of information. Is lack of information mm. and the solution is ownership. The mm -hmm. solution is is owning your music, putting it out, the internet, having your fans, shooting the videos, da 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 going on tour. Like you don't have to deal with them, but the solution is ownership. Um, so I just think, I just think that I do do hip hop justice. I have a message like, and I've said it before, like y'all talk about you know, which is fine. Spending thirteen thousand dollars in the Gucci store, I brag about thirteen thousand hard tickets, mm. and I feel like if that makes me arrogant, then I suggest you move the goalposts. Because why is thirteen thousand dollars in a Gucci store towards a company who doesn't like black people? Mm. Why is that received so much better than somebody saying you should be bragging about selling thirteen thousand tickets? Do question. you guys think? Question. Do you guys think in the future, like? rap music will just become so synonymous with American culture that someone like you won't feel like an outsider in it in the same way that like oh, I think it's there now. basketball 
is so synonymous with American culture. Like, I don't he, think it's a bad thing to feel like an outsider. I think that's white people's problem. Here's the problem with white people. Right. Like <laughs> everything about everything, white people are included in everything. Hip hop's right. the one thing and saying the N word is the thing that they're not included in and they feel just like disgusted Stupid and Stupid hill to die on. And it's yeah. like, right. it's like, yo, for once, yeah. you know what? Yeah, this isn't for you. It's not by you. And that's what it is. And it's okay to feel like an outsider. Like minorities have been the outsider to everything forever. So you know right. what? If hip hop is the one thing where white people are the outsiders in, I don't know if that balance should shift. I'm fine with being the outsider. I just want to contribute in a positive way. And I do want my credit for contributing in a positive way. Now, I would understand, right? If I came into this face tatted, rock, like wearing the hip hop costume, mm -hmm. braid, uh, you know, face tatted, and I'm talking about this type of shit and I'm doing this, just, you know, if I was on that type of aesthetic, but right. uh, I'm not a gimmick. I'm not making a mockery of hip hop or black culture. I'm trying to do it justice by, uh, you know, staying true to the message of hip hop, which I think is is underdog and freedom and ownership. And I just think that, you know, I'm cool with being an outsider as long as it's acknowledged that I am trying to help. If you, if you want a Grammy, say it was in the best, what is it, hip hop rap category, whatever. Yeah. If you wanted the one Tyler one, would you be upset? No, because I feel like the music that I make is hip hop music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Did you see what Tyler said? I do, but he, Tyler's spot on. And okay, I've, talk to me. I've always said too that, I just said it in this interview too, that culture in urban is a euphemism. Mm -hmm. So that like white corporate people, when you go to the label meetings and it's all these white guys who play softball on Sundays and they're like, you know, our urban department, it's like, say what you really mean, you know? Urban is just another word. I think for they the used same. to. And then people were like, stop saying that. <laughs> so like, well, we got to think of something. Started, started with that word. And they were like, whoa, chill the fuck out. But white people are Is there another open. word with an N in it? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe put the N at the end. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah but I don't like the word urban because it sounds biographical. What does that have to do with music? Well, yeah, because it's... Geographical. It's, geographical, yeah. yeah, yeah because, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't feel a way... But I will say on my um, on my first album, there's really a wolf. You know, you submit it to the Grammys, and then they listen to it and choose to put it somewhere. Mm. So, like, that's the other thing people don't understand too. When you submit your music for the Grammys, you oh. have to, you have to first of all you have to pick what you're submitting, then you submit, then it's all these industry voters and whatever they're in a hotel in LA and they have rooms designated for this room. Y'all are just listening to the pop submissions and whatever. So Tyler could have not submitted to hip hop if he wanted to. No, he could have submitted to whatever he wanted and so they could have decided that, no, it's hip hop. Ah, so they could still so, move it. Yes. Yeah, so when ah. I submitted my There's Really a Wolf album to hip hop, they moved it to urban contemporary. Eh. What? Yeah, because they said it was too much singing to be rap. But now with the Tyler situation, Tyler's album was majority singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it's like, well, so what do you really mean? What it really means is like, I don't, I don't know if we can call the black kid pop and I don't know if we can call the white kid rap yeah that's been mm, going on at radio for the longest too well like, radio is still radio is still race related urban radio is is black dominated and rhythm is where we all hang out together and pop is top 40 is white that I mean that's that's why at the end of the day um, I'm not you know I'm I'm fully aware why my song Best on Earth is now top 10 at urban radio um, there's Wait, why is urban, it urban? Uh, there's an urban I hate that word, bro. Black people there's live a, in the there's city. A, there's an urban artist on my song. I'm not surprised that when you when you look at even I always use this example, Machine Gun Kelly, yeah. who who raps, right? He's a rapper. Yeah. Raps super well, technically raps great. He had songs with Camilla Cabello or whatever that were number one at top 40. Nothing on urban. Huh. So how do you have a rapper, a rapper? on pop radio but not on urban and then vice versa you have Post Malone who doesn't rap but gets Quavo on 21 which is the urban play yeah. and that's why it shoots up the urban charts you feel me it's just playing the game which I like I understand I get it but it is um it is bizarre that it's still so separated at radio, well, but I, people I, like to see themselves reflected, right? It's like, just it's just audience. You remember Radio's Jeremy, all about audience. You remember when Jeremy Lin played basketball yeah. for the Knicks? Yeah, of course. And you remember Lin how Sanity. crazy it was, Lin yeah. Sanity? And yeah. like I would go to games and that shit felt like fifty percent Asian. It was crazy. Yeah. 
And they yeah. just felt represented there, right? Sure. It wasn't like they hated watching black basketball players or white basketball no, players. No, yeah, they just felt spoken for. They felt they felt spoken for. So maybe there's maybe there's some white people that, you know, when they watched Eminem, they were like, well, this is the first time I feel well, they comfortable feel like they rapping can, alone. Well, that's why it. I've had the conversation of, you know, when people maybe are with like, you too. well, when people are like being white, does it make it easier? And it's like 100% it makes it easier to be global because the reality is that the white kids in Belgium are going to relate to me more than maybe a Quavo off rip. Yeah. Because like when they see me, they see themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense <clears throat> now. So it makes it easier to be global, which it's probably why I can go to Portugal for my first time and do the arena and sell it out. Humble brag. But at the same time, yeah, but at the same time, uh, can I, but there's the hip hop media <clears throat> who still says who's Russ because why? The same thing working for me globally is the same thing working against me hip hop wise, which makes sense because hip hop is it's black culture. So if it's easier for me to reach the global masses, which are, you know, the white kids in Belgium and Germany, but right. harder for me to reach the real essence of hip hop, which is black culture, that makes sense. And I can't be mad at that. And the hip hop media probably thinks all your success comes from being, you white. being white, which that's a that is a fair critique. I can't sit here and stomp my feet. That is a fair Fair critique, which is why I just always resort it back to though. But look what I'm talking about. Look at my messages, which is ownership, self belief, and 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 ownership is the key. Right. And I'm not talking about blowing money at designers that don't like you and all these things. You know, it's like you know, resort it back to what I'm talking about. I'm not. I'm not coming. Well, why in. is it a fair critique? Because well, because it's a fair. It, it's a fair critique because if. If I was black, would I be selling out the same shows in Portugal or would why I need this? I'll tell you why. Because a big reason why my first huge fan base in the Middle East right. was huge because they thought I was Middle Eastern. Oh, oh, oh let me take that back. So you if I was be... black, would they have thought I was Middle Eastern? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, but yeah. not, you might not be selling out those shows in Portugal, but you might be selling out those shows in black and brown spaces. 100%. Well, that's when you give it and take. It's yeah. just like you if I was black, like everything I would be, is it, actually it, a really big benefit. It's just it's almost it's like it's kind of like obvious because it's like if I was black, I would be bigger in black spaces, but because I'm white, I'm bigger in white spaces, and that's why I can't sit here and be like, but why am I not bigger in black, bro? Because you're not black. Like it's just that simple. Or maybe black people just don't know yet. You know what and, I'm saying? And, but what I'm saying, I can't get frustrated about that because that is a fair thing. That's yeah, I, like, that's go, fair. You this goes back me? to like the house situation too, though. It goes back to white people thinking that everything is owed to them and like, how dare you exclude me from your conversation of, it's like, but no, But you got to appreciate your audience regardless I, of who they are. No, for sure. Yeah, which yeah. is why like, I focus on my audience, but you can't stomp your feet and be like, but like, why don't y'all fuck with me? Why don't y'all know? It's like, bro, like, give it time. And also, Cut the entitlement out. You know, you're not entitled to a certain demographic just because you think you're dope. It's such an interesting conversation for me, though, because I see black artists who want more white fans. Yeah. And then I see black artists who have a bunch of white fans yeah. who want more black fans. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? And then, yeah. like, even at radio, when you talk about, I remember when Rihanna would never get played on hip hop and RB stations. Right. Because she made pop music. Sure. So the pop stations used to just play Rihanna, hip hop wouldn't, which I used to didn't like because. The pop stations would play Katy Perry, and if she put Juicy J on the record, the hip hop stations would play because, her too. Right. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like that. But that's the obvious. That's what people do, though. That's mm -hmm. why, like, you see, you know, when and I love, like, I also wish that there was a, a more because before I'm about to say what I'm about to say, I wish there was a more accepting space for artists to speak openly about other artists and certain moves without it always getting taken as hate. Hate and yeah, I yeah. can't fuck with you. Like there should be more Shaqs and Charles Barkleys in music. Where no, we're playing the game too. Like I'm speaking from a place of experience. Can I just speak openly though? Go ahead, but, Russ. Speak but, openly. So like same thing with Katy Perry and Juicy J. It's the same reason why you see Sia put Kendrick on the song. Same reason why Maroon Five goes and gets Cardi B. It's because it's mutually beneficial. So Cardi you... B gets all the white fans from Maroon 5. Maroon 5 gets to go and get all the black fans from Cardi B. Got you. And it's a win-win. But is it mutual? I mean, like... It is mutual. Do, it's hold mutual. on. Do you really think that all of Cardi B's fans are going, I got to check out that Maroon 5 concert coming up? I can tell you that they, Maroon 5 has a better chance of getting Cardi B's fans by doing a song with Cardi B. Oh, but, but, who's getting me, more? I, I feel like... That way benefits Cardi. Maybe, yeah, I sure, think but at the end of the day, it also cool makes, yeah, 
That's yes, what it is. Maybe it's not, but it's, it's not, not a give and fans. take. That's what I'm saying. I, I was about yeah, to say the same thing. It's not a give and take. No, it's not. Cardi is cool. It's everybody. not that black and white. But what it is is that pop artists. This is traditional. Pop artists have always used hip hop artists, black artists, to look cool. <laughs> yes, right. That's and a that's fact. What, because pop was never the cool thing. Right. Pop was always the kind of like your top forty and corny. Yeah. I love Maroon Five though, and I love top forty yeah. music, but. Top 40 was always, it's not cool. Hip hop is cool. So yeah. cool. let's take a not cool thing, mix it with a cool thing. And maybe we'll end up somewhere in the middle. Because what you can't this? be mainstream and cool. Those things don't go together. But do they? I'm about to say, what, is, what does hip hop do now that it's pop music? Well, hip, you, I, my, that's I mean, it's up pop. to y'all, but... It is, but Not because of the sound, you don't but just because be. it's the most popular genre. Hip-hop you lose is, the influence that's, once no, you become pop music. That's what's beautiful is that hip-hop is so cool that it is the most popular thing now. Yeah. Yeah, but if you call it pop, it loses all the cool, like... That's why you, you can't, can't call be it cool pop, unless though. you're different. You can't be cool, like you said, unless you're the underdog, right? Sure. You can't be cool if you're doing something that nobody else is well, doing. That's, that's what makes something cool. Well, that's why you have to be careful with your creative and artistic decisions because before you know it, you've done too many mainstream looks and you are no longer that cool. Right. You're not cool to your core. Right. That's when your core cool flips on you. No, you're now not you're cool to all the people you're No, I'm going to tell you why. Because when your core flips on you, yeah. then all those people that weren't your core, they're like, oh, right. she's not cool no more. Yeah. Right. The core not cool. Exactly. Because the world, revolve, the world of music revolves around hip hop mm. as far as what's cool. Like, what are we saying now? Hey, everyone, what are we saying? How are we dressing now? What are we doing? Like, they look to hip hop for what to do, what to wear, what to say, the whole thing. But the second you become not cool to hip hop is the second you're just not cool in general. Mm. And you better just go over there sit with the guitar and sing some pop songs right. and try and make some shit shake. How do you forgive yourself, Russ, for, for your, your past unhealthy mindsets? How do you, how do you um, forgive yourself? Because I'm still here and it's and I'm alive and my family's healthy and I still have everything I want. I realized that, oh. um, you know, the worst moment in life that happens, like the sun comes up tomorrow. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you still end up having to go through it. So it's just, it's just always a little bullet points. Like, yeah, that was really fucked up. But you know what? I did make it through. I'm standing here today and I can't let that like define me. You just kind of, you got to grow from it and just forgive yourself. I look back at certain interviews or certain things I said and I'm like, nah, you know what? I get it. I understand that that guy was, he was head hunting. That's why I say in uh, the flute song, I've been on my Kobe number eight shit because it's like when Kobe was number eight, he was head hunting, trying to prove himself in the league. And, you know, when I first came into this, I was very much so like in survival mode. Like, nah, I got to prove to everyone that like, you guys are only doing a thousand tickets. I'm doing a thousand and one tickets and did it like all these things just to try and prove that I belong and, and like solidify my spot. But then time passes and you realize your spot isn't going anywhere. You're in your own lane. And you're like, man, I was kind of like going pretty hard. And, but I forgive myself because I should have been going that hard. Mm -hmm. I should have been, but now it's just about growing and kind of settling in and just taking your coat off, you know? What about the people you, you had to beat up, man? Do you, I don't, I don't, do I, I don't forgive. Um, how many people? I think I've seen two videos. <laughs> how many people got beat up? I, I've, I've seen two. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the most recent one. I can't remember what year that was. I, I, what was the most recent one? When the guy was standing outside the trailer. Was that mm. Smoke Perp? That wasn't Smoke Perp, was it? No, that was, um, that was Guap Dye. Well, I, I don't see. I'm yeah. old. I don't know. Well, I mean, I just, my whole thing is like, I just know that's Russ. I'm like, I, look I, at Russ. I forgive my oh, guy. So I think what's, <laughs> what's going on? What's going no, on? There's, there's absolutely Whose nothing globe are you on. shaking? <laughs> no. So, so what happened? They're talking. You never shit. saw that one? No, I didn't. Look, I'm like the guy very, was I'm standing outside. outside the trailer. Yeah, yeah. Russ approached him like the fine. I thought I had a good is. inspiration. A sweet guy <laughs> made yeah, nice yeah, music. Russ, Russ wanted to have a conversation with right. him. Um, and I don't know what the guy said to you, but clearly you didn't like what he said. No, it, it, it was more, it, it just comes down to this, right? Like, I feel like we're all, <laughs> I, I hate when people are like, I'm a grown ass man. I hate that because it's like, what are you trying to overcompensate for? But we're all grown ass men. And it's like, you know, if I don't know you and you don't know me, we don't have mutual friends, we've never talked before. And you diss me in a song. Now, granted, is the diss like, fuck you and your mom forever, did it? Nah, but it's like, it wasn't a positive thing. Mm -hmm. It was a diss. So if you just diss some random rapper or some random man that you don't know in a song, and then your trailer's across from mine and you see me walking up to you with 20 people and you know that like, I have no interaction with you prior to any of this. All mm -hmm. you know is that here comes a guy that I dissed in a song. Y'all never met before that or anything? Ever. Jesus. So it's like, what do you think this is about to be? 
Yeah. And it's just like prayer circle. Clearly all of these guys are here for prayer. Yeah. No, yeah, I was asking for the feature. And uh love the No, but it's like, you know, even with Smoke Perp, I never really intended it to go there. I perp with him. I approached them face to face and I just asked, like, yo, what's up? What was that about? What was this about? Same thing with Bob Todd. I just asked him what was it about. And what's the confusion? And yeah, and I just said, what would like why I mentioned my name in the song? And like, you know, he puts his phone down and pulls his pants up and starts turning his head. And like, if somebody that you diss that you don't know from anywhere is in your face talking to you and you're turning your head and doing this, pulling up your pants, I'm thinking, you're about to fight. Oh, you're about to swing on me. Yeah. So I'm just like, fuck, I wasn't even trying to go there, but I'm definitely not getting hit in my mouth. So I'm going to hit you in yours. Right. That's yeah. all it was. But like, it didn't have to go there. You could have been like, yo, my fault. Like, that was some dumb shit. My fault. I shouldn't even mention you. Why am I a grown ass man thinking about another grown ass man while I'm writing a verse? That's a little yeah. weird. Um, yeah. And it could have just been that. In this era of the internet, it is always better to swing first. Now, I'm not encouraging violence. I'm just yeah. telling you <laughs> that when the cameras are out, right? Like, if Russ would have hesitated just a little bit, Yikes. and this guy swings, then people come to break it up. Now the headline says, yo, Guap Dad swings on right. Russ. Put it like this. If I got swung on, yeah. the same hate would have happened except worse. They would have just been like, you got beat up. Russ got stomped out. It's, like, out. Yeah. it's like, well, shit, at least you could say whatever. And I, the whole narrative, like, you're getting people jumped. It's like... Who Bro, cares? what are you talking about? Getting people jump like if if first of all, if I swing and then my friends and your friends start fighting, I don't know if that is that getting somebody jumped. Did he have a lot Russ. of friends with him? He too? had he had people with him. And the craziest thing, and I don't want to say on this too long, but the craziest thing is when I swung on him, he ran, which you can see in the video. He ran, we saw it, right? And his skinny ass white friend photographer stayed back and was fucking with it. Which like we were all like, yo, we should hire him. He's fire. Like he stayed behind and took your yeah. ass beating. Yeah. Like how you let this skinny ass yeah. white kid take your ass beating? Are you, you saying ran white off? people are more brave than black people? Is that what I'm saying on this podcast? Nah. No. I, I just I just thought that you must not see who's back in yeah. Russ. I just thought that dude. <laughs> better Russ, white better look at Russ's black up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bro, white people do black steal up. shit from black people. They steal oh, ass beatings. Fuck. They steal all the things, man. Yeah. It's a fucked nah, up situation. I, just, I thought that was pretty telling. Yeah, you know. Do you think that y'all could ever be cool? You think you could be cool with any of these guys moving I, forward? I'm not a hater, so like I always say, like if Smoke Perp dropped a hard ass song today, I'm bumping. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought Guap that wearing a ten foot do rag was sick. I commented yeah. on the Instagram post. I was like, "This is amazing." <laughs> you said that? Yeah. What people say? I didn't even see that. Mm -hmm. What did people say when you said that? I don't know. I didn't. This look is back. amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> That's fire. I don't like. I'm not a hater. Like, but you disrespected me and you diss me. And then when I walk up to you, you start acting weird. So I'm just going to handle it accordingly. And if that means whatever, then it means whatever. And if I'm guapped at it, I'm probably like, fuck you for life too, which I get. But at least you know now, like at the end of the day, bro, all these people, I never started with them. I didn't say shit to y'all. Y'all dissed somebody, called me out my name, and you got punched in the face for it. Move on. Question, how long does a jumping last? It wasn't a jumping. It wasn't a jumping. Or just like a squabble like that. Like at what point do you like? All you right, I think we're done punching. What? You see the video? No, but he he no, no, but he ran away. Oh, he was he was a good he was running. You guys aren't quick. What's going on, guys? No, no, I'm saying he like you could watch. He's the, turning this. They turn their head like yo, bro. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? No, but like, I'm saying like you could get them no. some cardio, bro. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like you could watch the video. Like he ran away. His friend stayed back to fight. Uh, he yeah. ran away, which like I get, I yeah. guess, but it's like. It wasn't that serious. Like I only swung because I thought you were gonna swing. I should wait for you to swing. Yeah, no, never wait. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to encourage violence, but neither I, do I, I. But you know what? I always here's what I always people. Here's what I about here's why I just want to end it and then let's move on. But the reality is, a lot of people because I'm me and it's easy to be like fuck Russ, L Russ, da 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 da. Mm. That's nice. Go to chapter one. Just ask this person, this grown ass man, Guap Dad or Smoke Perp or Adam Twenty Two or whoever. Just ask them, yo. Why did you randomly just start talking shit about another grown ass man who you've never met? Right. Just ask them that because if not for that, if not for is that, that what, you what you think it is? <laughs> if not for no, that, I'm being serious. <laughs> why do you think? Why? I have, because it's easy. Because I'm telling you, because it's oh, you easy. think they're taking advantage? They, they, they think it's, it's just easy, you. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. white. I'm short. Right. I sing love songs sometimes. Yeah. It's easy, bro. Like I get it. You they think me? it's the easy lick. They think I it's the easy. It. I'm gonna say this. People yeah. gonna think I'm real. And I'm gonna get like, retweets. You know I'm gonna what, get likes. Bro, yeah. People can say whatever they want to say. At the end of the day, at least you know that if you diss Russ in a song, there is a high chance you're gonna get punched in the mouth for it. Now, can you jump no jumper? Yeah. What? Can you jump no jumper? 
<laughs> is that a trick question? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Wait, y'all beat up Adam? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Did you? No, I'm just saying that's what he. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but like. Me Have and y'all Adam, ever had a conversation? Yeah, me and Adam talked yeah. and it was like, and we squashed everything and we're cool. Was yeah. this after he saw what you was working with as far as your, your crew? Yeah, like, no, me and Adam are cool yeah. as far as I know. But it's just like, I just think it's just, it is unfortunate to for it to ever go to a violent place. But right. unfortunately, for a lot of people, that is the only language they understand. Why is that? Violence? Because it's like, it's not real enough till it's on your doorstep. Yeah. So it's like, who you could tweet back at me all day. I'm not going to, I've never once, like, I don't know, I'm not doing the Twitter shit with y'all, so. I want to talk to you about a couple more things. Um, You know, you, you you have discussed openly, you know, your problem with artists promoting drug use. Yeah. So when you see a Mac Miller pass away, mm-hmm. rest in peace, Mac Miller, when you see a Juice World. And Lexi uh, yeah, from Minnesota. Yeah, from Minnesota, yeah. yeah. When, you, when you see these people pass away, mm-hmm. I don't want to say, I don't think, uh, spiking the football is the right word. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. is there a reason to come back and say, look, I this is what I was no, trying to like explain. No, like I y'all. told you so moment. Yeah. No, because I don't think, I think that's distasteful. But I think that um, it is, you know, it's sad that that happened. And I think, mm-hmm. I think unfortunately a lot of times with them, I don't know if it was, if it was so much of a crazy addiction problem with like a Mac Miller or a Lexi or now, I don't know. I'm just like, hypothetically, I don't know, but, or if it was just one night you took one too many things and you're mm. partying and just yeah. fuck, it's a Len Bias situation. You take yeah. Coke one time in your life and then yeah. it just fucks up. But, um, I will say that I did find it sad that it took that. And then a juice world situation mm. for a lot of artists who have tried to, you know, reprimand me publicly it took that for them to come out and say, man, I've been fucking up talking about drugs and this is whack mm. and I'm going to go to rehab now. And it's like, oh, so that's what it took. Yeah. Sometimes it's, you got to remind people though, right? No, you got to remind like, people that this is what I was trying to nah, tell you No, but the reality y'all. is like, for, unfortunately for a lot of artists who had a problem with me saying what I said about rappers glorifying drug abuse as if it's a game, mm. it took three overdoses for y'all to finally hold yourselves accountable, mm. which I think is pathetic. But it's like what you said about being on your doorstep. Then people yeah. realize. Well, because then it's like your friend died. So now you're like, oh shit, I should stop posting pictures smiling next to lean. Yeah. Like it's cool. And you know what? I'm tripping. I got kids looking up to me. It's like, damn, bro, it took you three overdoses for you mm. to realize that you have kids looking up to you. Do you not look at your followers? Do you I don't get, get it. Do you get caught up in it though when you're listening to like a future song and it's great music. It makes it sound cool. It, yeah. And it sounds, I don't even mm-hmm. know half the things he's saying in the song. It just sounds fun. Yeah. No, it sounded fun. That's why when I was 19, me and my friend, we wanted to go try Lean because it sounded fun. And then we just didn't do it. But, and people got on me for that when that clip went kind of around the internet. Like, how you 19 letting the, like, you're a grown ass man, 19, talking about you were influenced to do something. Like, huh? I'm, I'm like, wait a second. Is there an age limit on when you can be influenced to do something? Mm. Or, so you can't, like, if you're 35 and you listen to a rap song that makes you want to go do something positive, you're whack. Mm. You shouldn't be impressionable at 35. It's like, bro, like there's no age limit on when Good you can ideas. be influenced by like yeah. 19. And you're acting like I was 39 talking about, yeah, you maybe want to try lean. Like yeah. I was 19 and y'all are 35 tempted to scam because you heard it. So shut up. How do you counter <laughs> that in your music? How do you counter the, the, the celebration of the drug culture in your music? Because I feel like it, it, it's got to be records that encourage people not to do it, right? Yeah, but then that comes off a little too... I do have a song called... That's not out. It's over a boy one to be called The Kids. That kind of speaks on it a lot. But you don't want to come off too like wagging the finger and preachy. Mm. But you just kind of want to provide an alternative, like a different song <laughs> that, you know, um, isn't talking about that. But I, I do think artists need to hold themselves accountable. And I love Future's music too. I think Future making it and grinding and doing all that is great. But I do think at the end of the day, if we're just being real... You have to hold yourself accountable as a 36-year-old man or whatever he is and someone who's come on an interview and said that you don't even do the drugs you are talking about, mm. which is, which all that says is that you're literally just doing it to poison and entertain. And I, you know, I don't know if that's great because- No, it's not great. At, at, at that point, at that point, the culture is hyena driven. It's we eat our own because- you have come on an interview and said, no, I'm not even doing the drugs I'm rapping, but I just know y'all want to hear that. Which really says to me, I'm not getting high. I'm not overdosing. Y'all are. That's great. I'm going to keep giving you the background music for it because mm. it makes me money. That's a part of the problem. We've seen this movie before, though. I mean, you had rappers back in the day 
who would rap about all of this gangster shit that they was doing. Yeah. And they weren't, but they was, you but know. they got people locked they up got in the process. Ca- exactly. Yeah. You know, and they, they were doing it killed. all for just entertainment. Look, I have no problem with so-called can negative. I, can I cut you off okay, real quick? Ahead. Because when people, because I know what people are going to say to that, which is, well, if someone, if someone makes you want to go do something fucked up because of a rap song, then you're weak minded. No. It's like, okay, but hold on a second. Mm. Does someone make you want to go do something positive in a rap song? Does that mean you're weak minded? Because, Influence is influence. Influence has no negativity or positivity. If you listen to a song and it makes you want to go do if do something, if you listen to Changes by Tupac and it makes you want to go be positive, yeah. does that mean you're weak-minded? No. So just on the flip side, it doesn't, you know... Humans are impressionable. That's what I'm it is. Don't fuck what age and music you are. is supposed to inspire. Artists are inspiring people. Music is inspiring. Yeah. So you have to be careful with your platform because you have to understand that it might inspire you to do something negative yeah. or bad. If I make a song called Go Get Money and then I make a song called Go Do Lean, I can't be like, you're weak-minded if you only listen to the Go Do Lean version. Mm. Like, no, bro. People are impressionable. Like, people are influenced. I mean, that's why we have advertisements. If that's you it? couldn't, uh, that's influence. what commercials are every day. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. There's a reason car why. commercials, and McDonald's. Low key, maybe we should look at athletes like that too. Because every time I see LeBron like in a McDonald's commercial, I'm like, you don't eat this shit, right? You know, like so it's like you are the pinnacle of health, right? Right. right. And you out here telling kids to eat shit that's giving them heart attacks. So it's, it's <laughs> right. I thought about that shit last night when I got off the plane. McDonald's the only thing open, and I was like, I should go get some fucking. Fries and mm-hmm. a quarter right. pounder. LeBron eats that shit. LeBron eats that shit. I didn't even know about that shit. LeBron is in the McDonald's. All of them. Yeah. I was like, nah. But he'll I eat think, that shit. I think, especially in hip hop, songs are commercials for the lifestyle. You know, and so I think that if like if your song, which is the commercial for the lifestyle you're selling, if your mm. song is talking about using drugs or whatever, you cannot be surprised that people watched your commercial, aka your song, and was mm. like, wow, that sounds like a great idea. And then you turn around and be like, y'all shouldn't do it though. I always say you can't live this, do as I say, not as I do. Like, yeah. You can't live like that. That's what my dad how- used to tell me when I was selling Same. crack. Don't do what I do, do as I say. Hey, you sell crack too, my guy. I want to hear that shit. Right, right. But it's like, my dad used to tell me too. You can't tell, your, I couldn't tell my little sister, do as I say, not as I do. Like my actions speak. Mm. So, you know, I, like you could, you could be on the gram all day telling people, you know, don't give money to these designers. They don't fuck with you and don't buy jewelry. Don't waste your money on it. But if your selfie video is coming from a place of you're wearing Gucci and 10 chains on your neck, mm. I don't know if it really resonates. Right. It just seems a little fake. You feel me? Just It's entertainment. It's sad because when you're young, or not even when you're young, but just humans are impressionable and it's hard to discern what you should and shouldn't do. And, and if you don't want to be looked up to and if you don't want to be... Uh, a place and or a source of inspiration, then stop rapping. You yeah. feel me? Then stop rapping. But you cannot get on a song, promote something in your music, and then be surprised when people turn around and do it. You are part of the problem. That's, that's it's that simple. That's why you can't say you're not a role model because you it's, are. Whether you, you are, want to be you, or not, it comes mm. with the dinner. You have millions of people looking at you. That's a role model. Mm. Like deal with it. Like. Like, look at look at Wiz. Wiz had the whole fucking world with the blonde streak in their hair wearing Chuck Taylors. You know what I'm saying? Which is fire. I thought that was a birth defect. I didn't know he was actually, I didn't know he was dying it. I thought like, you know how some yeah. people have like patches that are sure. like, they, they have no right. pigment in their like hair. A, like a vitiligo situation. Yeah, I thought it was like <laughs> a hair vitiligo. And then someone was like, no, it's a choice. I was like, all right. I yeah, no, but cool. it's like that type of thing, like that's influence. And so when, of course. Ty, when Tyler the Creator has people who dress like him, like all these things, you're influencing people. So if you think that, you know, I know for me, when I put out music and it's these, you know, the times where it's these inspirational songs and the do it myself and the yeah. manifest and the, it's on your head, that's going to inspire someone to go and do something positive. But right. as as easy as I can make you want to go, you know, fuck the world up and, and, and be great and just seize mm-hmm. the day is as easy as you could go, I could inspire you to go do some fuck shit. And, and artists trying to like shy away from like, Ah, uh, I just rap about it, but like, don't do it. It's like, <laughs> no, what? Yo, your music has more influence on you, you than you do. Yeah, yes. yeah doesn't make any sense. It's funny. It's like, and I'm not like, <laughs> I'm never once again. That is not gonna go over well. I'm letting y'all know now. When y'all watch this, I'm aware you're gonna have an issue. But the reality is that it's the truth. And when 20 years pass, I'm on the right side of the fence. Because I am i don't need to wait for overdoses to happen to be like, wow, maybe we should be careful about what we're talking about. Like y'all like get with the program. You feel that's, me? That's the, that's the funniest part when like rappers start supporting politicians 
And like you see all these rappers coming out and talking about different people. Like, oh, how could Trump speak this way? It's like, do you listen to you? <laughs> you <know what> I mean? <laughs> like, he talks about women. That's like, listen to one song yeah, I'm, that I, you have. After what happened with Joe Rogan last week, I'm shocked that more. Bro, fuck more, CNN I'm, I'm, and these fake. We, fuck, we'll talk about that. Right. <laughs> but I'm, I'm shocked more people who haven't cowards. gotten on people for their rapper endorsements. Well, you know, you know what, what it is? It's, it's actually, you know what that feels like? It feels like almost like a disassociation, like rappers are not aware of the power that they have. Yes. It feels- You're not a painter. It just it's feels different. like, bro, are you aware of who you are? Yeah. Maybe they're not. I think that- I, it Well, they feel, don't want to be. It comes off like they're not, it's either, it's either you're absolutely unaware or you're in denial that you have that much power. You know what it is? You probably have experienced this. If you're the Migos and you grew up in a certain part of Atlanta, yeah. around a bunch of brothers and sisters that look like you, they talk like you. Mm -hmm. You don't realize your influence that you go off to some far off country yeah. and there's some white dude in there with tattoos on his face and this double cut, whatever it is, right. it dreads. Then you're like, whoa. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now you realize how powerful your voice is because yeah. you expect the people where you're from right. to gravitate towards it and you to influence them. But when you go somewhere else and you see the power of your influence, I wow. Just, I feel like this. I feel like music, since the day it started, and this is like the message I really want to give. Music since the day it started has raised kids. Of course. It has helped raising kids. So I think what is going to happen, start happening, what's going to be the turning point is a lot of these rappers are having kids. And I think a lot of these rappers, maybe not in an interview they would say, but I think a lot of these rappers would agree that they don't even want their kids living the lifestyle they're rapping about. Absolutely. So, why, so, so the truth is that, but you're raising kids all around the world. Now Absolutely. that you have one of your own, you're like, wait, maybe... <clears throat> Like if you're if you mm. gotta tell your kid don't listen to my music or if you do just understand it's all rap and it's all entertainment. How convenient that your kid gets to have you in his ear, but the kids around the world don't. Mm. And so you know when kids all over the world are getting fucked up because they don't have you in your ear telling them it's not real, it's just wrestling. Then a lot of but you know movies, to, to, no, no, no real quick though no, to his point, a lot of artists don't get there. And what I mean by that is they don't get those ten year runs to grow up and evolve sure. like Jay Z. Jay Z yeah. can give you four four four. That's why yeah. I love Jay Z because he made kill you know Jay Z. What I'm saying? But he can do that. A yeah. lot of guys don't last that long yeah. to give you that. Yeah. No, At what true. point do we but the movie not thing, censor, right? Well, I'll, I'll tell you the we thing were with raised movies. By movies, and TV. movies, the context of movies is it's acting. Entertainment. Hip hop, the context of hip hop is that it's, it's supposed real. to be the truth. Hundred percent. And they're different. That's the I, that, I like, do think hip hop is not supposed to be acting. That's right. what makes hip hop hip hop. It's supposed to be real. So if you're now starting, if you're now saying, well, everyone should know hip hop is not real, right. then now we're changing the essence of what hip hop is. Yep. Right. So listen, do me a favor, Russ. Uh when Shake when Shake the Snow Globe goes number one, right? Yeah. I want you to put on a white terry cloth. Sure. And just do like this on Instagram and say, I am Jesus. I'm not mad at that. That's how it's going to come out of my next show. That's how it's going to come out of my next show. I'm serious. I'm serious. That'll be Which crazy. Which is fog at my feet. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, uh, good, to well. good to see you, man. Good to I'm see you. I'm glad you could pull up. I want to, to ask you about Kobe, though, because I know, you know. Yeah. Um, I think people like, we talk about this a lot. When I say we, I just mean like my friends and, and, and my like, I always call them just like my counsel. Like we just talk about everything mm -hmm. in group chat. But um, people like Kobe and people like Nipsey are legendary because of the legacy they leave behind, which is a mentality. A lot of people, um, a lot of artists who have passed away, will pass away, whatever, it's hard to honor them. If you look at a lot of artists right now, how would you honor a lot of these artists right now? If you look at the landscape of hip hop, what would you do to honor some of these people? And there's nothing to do. What, are you going to buy chains to honor them? Like, mm. yo, in your honor, I'm buying a Patek today. It's like, okay, <laughs> um, I guess. But, you know, when you look at Nipsey, Nipsey had the marathon, continues. Yeah, like, it's yeah, a yeah. real mentality. Like, something you can apply to your life. Everyone can apply it. An accountant in fucking Rancho Cucamonga could apply it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, everything. Kobe, Mamba mentality, absolutely, locked yeah. in, focused, lasered in, like, absolutely. mentality. <clears throat> so I think for me... Um, that's why, like, people like Kobe and Nipsey are the ones. Those are the people that do change the world because they impact it by leaving behind a mentality. Mm. Like, you know, I listen to Nipsey every day, but what I do more than listen to Nipsey songs, I listen to the mentality left behind. I live it. I honor him by, like, yeah. living it. I can hear you talking about ownership. And, yeah, yeah, same with Kobe. Like, yeah. it's like, I'm going to try and do my best to be the best version of myself and, yeah. and stay going to the gym, which for me is my studio and stay locked in. Yeah. But that's why I am like, 
I'm proud of myself that even the little amount of time that I've had the space to speak from, I've left behind a mentality. Mm. I've put out a book. Yeah. I, I've I've given people tools to it's self belief, it's manifesting, it's ownership, and so I know I've left a real mark. If I die today, I know there's a mentality left behind. I mean, I'm a perfect example of it. Yeah, and you right. didn't even know. Thank I you existed. so much. Yeah. And there's all these no, comics out here. No, I mean, like you didn't know that you influenced me like that. Yeah, and yeah. there's all these comics out here that. They think I've influenced them, but that really came from you. And that's a trickle effect. That's a domino effect. But that that's when you beautiful. talk about mentality or or religion or I, you know, ideology, like yeah, it's so true. That's something that really does live on forever. I never thought about it in terms of we we often think about legacy in terms of numbers, but it's not about numbers. No, because no, stat, stats can be broken. No, it's it? how faith you, is like, in the what works do you do or something. To, what is that? Sentence? Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Yeah. So it's really yeah. the work. It's like if you can pass on work, if you can pass on the action, yeah, the mentality, not, yeah, not yeah. the end result, no. That really lives for it as long as it's effective. Yeah, because yeah. Kobe's yeah. stats can be broken. Fuck no this one's you know like, I'm Nipsey's, going to the gym at 4.30. Yeah, right. it's the mentality. Yeah. I'm not that's afraid of you. I'm going yeah. at you. And I'm going to own yeah. the gym. And I'm going to... But it's the mentality you leave behind. And I encourage artists and just people in general to leave behind a mentality. Mm. Have you thought about what your mentality would be called? My mentality is do it yourself. And, and self-belief. That's what it really is. And that's why it's all in your head. Is That book, to me... You know, I'm sorry to the fans of the music, but that book is more important than any song I've ever dropped mm. because that book is my mentality in book format. Yeah. yeah. And so when I die, before you listen to any song of mine, mm. read my belief system. Yeah. Because if you apply this to your life- That's the religious text. As opposed wow. to just the songs, yeah. that's going to help you. Yeah. And that's what I'm leaving behind. That's why I feel like I can pat myself on the back because I did give back. I did contribute to the world. I left the world a better place than how I found it. Huh. And I feel like Nipsey left the world a better place than how he found it and Kobe did. And a lot of these people, like I said, it's just, you know, yeah, you bring joy to people with your music and that's cool, but, you know, when you're gone, how do we honor you? We're going to go to the Gucci store. We're going to go buy a watch. And then, like, half of us can't do that. Mm. So then what do we do? We're just we going to listen to your songs? It's like... Smoke perp. It's true. No. <laughs> no, I get... I <laughs> Shake the snow globe <laughs> out at midnight. My man, what? motherfucking Russ, man. Yes. Yo, thank you so much for coming, man. Nah, yes. It's meant a lot to me. I'm glad we got happen. to meet. Yeah, me I too. I appreciate you. Thank you.